Chapter 301, I'll take care of you in the future try as he might, Chin Gu could not get the third drawer to open. He pulled out the top two drawers to try to see the contents of the third drawer from above. However, to his disappointment, there were wooden boards partitioning the different levels, so he could not see anything. The room is purposely kept clean, and I do not want to ruin it. If you can hear me, you'd better come out on your own. This was not the first time that Chin Gu had threatened a ghost, but he had no idea whether it would work or not. He grabbed the edge of the drawer and tried to pull, but the drawer seemed stuck on something. Su Yin. Chin Gu summoned Su Yin, and they grabbed the drawer on both sides. As Su Yin channeled his strength, the wounds on his body opened again. The red blood trailed down his white arms to drop on the edge of the drawer. The drawer that remained unmoved started to loosen. Keep going. Su Yin did not hold back. He would do what Chin Gu told him to. The wounds on his body tore open, and blood dyed his shirt. His face was twisted from the exertion, and his hands were covered with his own blood. So painful. The tightly closed drawer finally was pulled open the width of one's finger. Su Yin's power seemed to affect the stuff inside the drawer. The blood continued to flow, and the drawer was slowly pulled open by Su Yin. When the drawer opened to the size of half a palm, several human hands suddenly reached out from within. There were male and female hands. They tried to stop Chin Gu and yank the drawer close. Surprised, Chin Gu and Su Yin released their grip, and the drawer closed shut with a bang. Why do you insist on this struggle? Chin Gu stopped Su Yin, who intended to repeat the earlier effort. He picked up the hammer and said, I'm trying to be nice. After all, we might work again in the future. I hope you'll give this serious consideration. I can use brute force to smash the table or use fire to burn everything and look for what I need in the rubble, but I won't. I'm a kind person, and you can ask any of my friends to confirm that. Chin Gu squatted beside the drawer, he was not afraid of the stuff that might reach out from within the drawer. He gripped the drawer's handle. This drawer belongs to me, and I'm just taking it back. He increased his strength and said, I will forget what happened tonight. Even though all of you have tried to trick me again and again, none of you came for my life. You only wanted to scare me away. I'm telling you not to waste your time. I'm someone who you can reason with. If you have any issues, come out and talk to me. Then Shin Ge's empty hand picked up the hammer. Like now, you have no other option. Eventually, you'll need to face me. Why not lower your guard so that we can start this over the right way? The drawer slowly vibrated like the spirits inside it were in a disagreement. After ten seconds, the drawer voluntarily bounced out for one centimeter. Good, I do appreciate cooperative spirits. Chin Gu took out the third drawer and placed it on the table. It contains several comic books. These are by the artist's hand. The notebook said that none of the publishers wanted to work with the artist so he probably went the route of self-publication. So many ghosts came from these comic books. Chin Gu thought back to his experience that night, and he understood certain things. He flipped through the comic books that looked to be the artist's work. The artist had a semi-realistic style, and it was understandable why no publishers wanted to work with him. The characters in his story felt uncannily real. The whole comic was made up by five individual stories. The main character of the first story was a gambler. He was thin and tall, he looked similar to the man Chin Gu had seen earlier. The gambler was born in a single-parent family. He had never seen his father and was raised by his mother. He did not receive any worthwhile education. If he did not make anything of himself, it would have been fine, but he suffered from the vice of gambling. Even in his thirties, he had no work and relied on his mother. For him, life was meaningless other than being alive. However, when he was 37, his peaceful life was shattered. The mother who took care of him fell seriously ill, and they quickly burned through his mother's savings. His mother wanted to give up on the treatment, but the gambler did not agree. He sold everything they had but the old house that was under his mother's name. Even so, the surgery still needed some money, and even if the surgery was successful, 
she could not do heavy work again. He thought about it and began to borrow money from loan sharks. The surgery was successful, but the loan had tripled from the interest. The loan sharks forced the gambler to sell his mother's home to settle the debt. The gambler asked them to give him one night to consider. The second day, the loan sharks returned, and they got a shock of their life when they pushed the door open. There was a basin on the round table, and it was filled with blood. The gambler's left hand was chopped off, and he stood next to the table with the cleaver in his right. He said that he had not done anything worthwhile for his mother before in his life. Now that his mother could not do heavy work anymore, if he sold the house, she would have nowhere else to go. Therefore, he would never sell the house. If they wanted something as compensation, then he would give them his life. He was the one who signed the loan papers. He rushed out of the bedroom, slashing the cleaver, so no one dared to stop him. They watched on as the man jumped from the eighth floor window. The gambler died on the spot, but the arm that he chopped off was still not found. The main character for the second story was an interning English teacher. The old landlady rented her the living room and the master bedroom while she stayed in the small bedroom. After her son passed away, the old lady became quite confused and absent-minded. The teacher took care of her like she was her real mother. The two got close, and things were moving toward a positive ending. The English teacher would conduct tuition at night, so she came home late. However, when she returned, the old lady would have dinner prepared for her. She was already old, so she would be asleep when the teacher returned. Afraid that she might wake the old lady up, she would advise the old lady to close the door when she went to sleep. One day, the teacher came home late again. She did not realize that someone was following her. Once she left the stairwell, someone reached out from behind to clamp his hands over her nose and lips. She struggled vehemently and tussled with the culprit in the corridor. Surprised by her vehemence, to prevent her from making noises and attract attention, the murderer slit her throat. The body could not be left in the corridor, so he dragged the teacher's body back into the bedroom. He cut her into pieces to hide them inside the many drawers. It was the old lady who found the teacher inside the drawers the next day. The killer was caught five days later, but the old lady's condition worsened. With the neighbor's help, she was sent to the hospital. It was then that the room welcomed its third tenant. It was a real estate agent, and he was the main character of the third story. Chapter 302 I'll fulfill your dream since the old woman was in the hospital for her treatment, she rented the whole room to the agent. The agent, who was around 30, was not a local, and following the company's requirement, he wore a white formal shirt every day. He was polite and kind. However, that was hiding a broken man. He was an unlucky man. No matter what he did, he would fail for some reason. Other than that, weird things kept happening to him like having nightmares that his wife had been chopped up and shoved into drawers. It would haunt him for the whole night, and then he woke up in the morning, realizing he did not even have a girlfriend. When he left home, the sun was shining, but the moment he stepped out, it started to pour. His shirt was soaked, and he decided to stop at the nearby shop to have breakfast. After breakfast, he realized that he had left his wallet at home. This meant that he could not call for a taxi. He walked to the company and was scolded by his boss for being late. He lost the client because he was late to the appointment, and when he returned home, he realized that a burglar had broken into his home. Such a day of tragedy was an everyday occurrence for the man. However, Compared to these things, the real despairing event was the realization that his own house was haunted. He stayed in the old house alone, and whenever he wanted to relax at night by watching the television, before the punchline, someone would laugh behind him. There were many similar things. In the middle of his shower, someone would pass him the shampoo, and when he was trapped on the toilet without paper, the toilet paper would roll in on its own. He had once been a firm non-believer but the many things he had experienced inside the house changed his worldview. To prove that he did not suffer from a mental illness, he bought a camera and started to record his own home. One week later, he realized that there was indeed a ghost inside the home, and it was hiding inside the drawers. The agent used wooden planks to seal up all the drawers and dressers, and the ghost stopped appearing. 
However, his bad luck seemed to worsen. About one month later, he was fired from his job, and on his way home, he died in a car accident. After he died, the agent realized that a malicious ghost had been following him, and it was the spirits inside the home who had been helping him. After he sealed up the drawers and dressers, the malicious ghost had stopped being affected by the spirits, and it eventually took the agent's life. The main character of the fourth story was the old landlady. The tenants who rented her place had all died from accidents. Her heart was wrought by guilt, thinking this was all her fault. Slowly, the old lady's mind twisted. She had this feeling her own son and the two tenants had not left the room and had stayed to accompany her. She asked the neighbors, but those who knew about the home's past gave her a wide berth. They thought that she was a tragic woman. Some even moved away like the old lady would curse them. The tenants in the building slowly decreased, and the old lady retreated into herself. Slowly, there were rumors that the old residential area was haunted, and the old lady was equated to the source of these stories. Everyone stayed away from her, and no one wanted to interact with her. This went on for a long time until the old lady met a poor artist under the bridge. The man's face was wounded like he had just been in a physical altercation. The old woman pitted him and asked the artist to draw a portrait of her dead son. Initially, she just wanted to find a reason to give the artist some money so that he could eat, but the finished portrait was not just similar to her son, he managed to capture his presence, aura, and gaze. The old lady treasured the portrait and hung it in her house. To her surprise, there was someone who came to ask her about the rental the next day, and the newest tenant was the artist. The artist was surprised that the landlord was the old lady. He went through the old residential area and found the cheapest room. Life was constructed by many coincidences. The artist found his first fan in his life, and the old woman found someone who was not afraid of her and wished to talk to her. The artist became the home's latest tenant. The old lady took the rental from him in a symbolic manner. She treated the artist like her own son, and her favorite thing to do was talk about his dreams and wishes. One month later, the old lady found something weird about the artist. He would converse with his drawings, and every night at midnight, there would be weird noises coming from his room. During the third month, the old lady finally followed her curiosity and sneaked into his room when the artist was out. In the end, inside the artist's drawer, she found a homemade comic made from a sketchbook. It had four stories. The creepy drawing style and scary stories brought the characters to life and the most surprising detail was that the first three stories matched the old lady's son, the English teacher, and real estate agent perfectly. The more she read, the more afraid she became. Then she turned to the fourth story. To her surprise, she was the main character of the story, and it was telling the events that happened after she met the artist. The fourth story ended there, and it was the last story. The fifth story was very short, it felt more like an epilogue. The main character was a comic artist. He did not look extraordinary. He was just like a normal middle-aged man. The comic introduced his daily life. He woke up at 5.20 a.m. and gave himself a pep talk in the mirror. Then he started working. He would work until 8.20 a.m. He arranged his draft and personally went to Jiu Jiang's local publisher to recommend his story to the editor. Alas, a month's hard work was denied in less than 15 minutes. He left the office like a walking dead. He held the draft and sat by the road. He looked at the cars that zoomed past him and only returned home when the sky was dark. He walked through the busy city and into the darkened staircase. He pushed the door open to room 304. The warm light fell on his body. The landlady cooked him dinner and said that she had seen the painting that he drew that morning. She told him it was a masterpiece. The artist could not remember how many times he had been rejected already. He apologized to the old lady and promised he would not pick up the paintbrush again. He hid himself in his room and locked the door. Hugging his knees, he curled up in the corner of the room. He looked at the drawer full of rejection letters and buried his head in his chest. He had failed once more. He crumbled the rejected script into a ball and tossed it inside the dustbin. He kept complaining, saying that he had no talent, and decided to give up everything. 
he would jump from the building before he continued drawing. He talked to himself until midnight, and the tired artist fell asleep on the mat. The lights in the room flickered before going out completely. The draft in the trash can floated out on its own, and it flattened itself out. It was placed carefully into the box under the bookshelf, and the table was carefully arranged to a tidy state. The last panel of the comic was black and white. In the small room, the artist was already asleep, but there were several people floating around him. The first was a thin man, he used his remaining right hand to cover the artist with a blanket, grumbling how worrisome the man was. Beside him was a woman whose body seemed like it was going to collapse any time soon. The woman's beautiful face was locked in a deep frown. She carefully taped the torn drafts together. On the other side of the table was a man in a black shirt. He was using a pen to correct and edit the comic artist's draft. The night passed by just like that. At 5.20 a.m. the next morning, the alarm rang punctually, and the comic artist woke up from his dream. He turned off the alarm and looked at himself in the mirror. He smiled and gave him the daily pep talk. A new day has begun. Give it your best shot. At least you're alive. One day you'll make it. Chapter 303, Lesser Red Specter Chen Gu was absorbed in his reading, but when he flipped to the next page, all he saw was blank. That's it? He looked at the date that was marked by the comic artist and then picked up the notebook that was sitting beside him. He removed the yellowed newspaper and compared the dates. The day after finishing this panel, the artist died. The newspaper was probably slotted into the notebook by the old landlady or the other tenant. That was the day his dream died. Chin Gu sat on the bed with the homemade comic in a new appreciation for the few ghosts he had met that night. The comic told the five stories of the five tenants of room 304. None of them could be considered bad people. Chin Ji's initial guess was that the ghost in the comic had affected reality, but after reading the comic artist's own story, he understood the ghosts in reality had entered his comics. To get all the spirits to look after him, this uncle is quite amazing. Turning to the fifth story, Chin Gu told the despondent middle-aged man, I understand your dissatisfaction. You wished for your stories to be seen and loved by more people, I can help you do that. The ears of the uncle who was hiding in the corner while hugging his knees perked up when he heard Chin Gu. It felt like he wanted to turn his head around. The comic is indeed interesting. It should be something that spirits can attach themselves to. Lingering spirits that were not Red Spectre needed to possess a certain item to ensure their longevity. The comic of the artist had over 30 empty pages. If this thing could let other spirits inhabit it, Chin Gu would not need to carry a backpack with him everywhere. In fact, he could bring the 24 students from Mu Yang High School to go for a stroll whenever he wanted to. Thinking about this, Chin Gu was intrigued. Uncle, neither yourself nor the characters by your hand had your wishes fulfilled. Why don't you tell me what you need? I can help you undo the regrets that you still have in this life. To increase his persuasion, Chin Gu provided many examples like helping the comic artist publish his work, helping the real estate agent deal with the malicious spirit that gave him bad luck, helping the gambler find his missing left hand, or helping the English teacher meet up with the family she had not seen for many years. After some time, the middle-aged man in the comic finally turned his face around. He had a typical middle-aged man, and he looked like he had no love for life. He stared at Chin Gu with caution and suspicion. Several minutes later, the panel underneath him had these few words surfacing on it. Please take care of us. At the same time, the black phone vibrated. Chin Gu did not mind the middle-aged man, and he opened the message before him. Lucky Spectres favored. You have just obtained a lesser red specter. Yen Danian, a rare special type baleful specter. Ability 1, affinity with baleful specters, he looks so saddened and devastated that he can easily get the pity from other spirits. Ability 2, spirit drawing, after seeing a baleful specter, there's a chance for drawing it into the comic sketchbook, excluding red specters. Ability 3, reading the message on the black phone. Chen Ji's eyes almost fell out of their sockets. He could not imagine that the middle-aged man wearing a white shirt, curled up in the corner, 
with sadness overflowing from his face could be a lesser red specter. You really cannot judge a book by its cover. This was the first time Chen Gu had met a specter with three abilities, but the appearance of this specter shamed all specters. Even Xiao Xiao tried day by day to pretend to be scary, but this uncle had completely given up. He did not have any pride as a specter. He did not look scary, he looked sad, tired, despondent, and depressed. The third ability has not been unlocked yet, it's probably the reason the uncle is called a lesser red specter. Perhaps it's a power that allows him to control all the ghosts that are not red specters. Chen Gu understood the comic artist's meaning. He had not fully trusted him yet. He needed to wait until he finished the uncle's wish before he could become an official haunted house employee. The uncle is familiar with drawing, and his style is a perfect match for a haunted house. Other than him, there are other spirits inside his comics. Buy one, get four for free. I can probably ask them to help me maintain the props or clean the house. When the situation calls for it, I'll get them to help around the scenarios. This bunch of actors will be perfect inside a haunted house. A smile formed on Chen Ji's face. He promised sincerely, Brother, I understand your wish. Don't worry, I'll definitely help you make it a reality. Collecting all the drawings, Chen Gu shoved the painting equipment on the table into his backpack before exiting to the narrow corridor. It's time to say goodbye to the past. He closed the door to room 304. When he exited the stairwell, a faded black shadow floated out from behind the nearby bush and entered the comic. It was the escaped landlady. Chen Gu returned to New Century Park and headed for Mu Yang High School. He explained the situation to all the mannequins, holding the comic, and left without knowing whether his message had been understood or not. The specters inside the comics aren't malicious spirits. They will help me resolve the lack of manpower inside the haunted house. Yen Danian himself has three abilities. After completing his wish and unlocking the strongest power, he might give me another surprise. Returning to the staff break room, Chen Gu logged into his video sharing app's account. His live stream room was still blocked, but his followers had jumped to 510,000 already. The private messages kept coming. Looks like people still care about me. The haunted house's first exposure had been through the app so Chen Gu did not plan to give up such a wonderful promotional channel. He opened the comic and snapped the panels that looked the weirdest. Boss, I'm going to show your work to 500,000 people, and that is first step I'm going to take to help you promote your work. Times have changed. A few years ago, you still needed to personally beg the publishers to look at your work, but this time, I'll make them come to you. Chen Gu did not worry about Yen Danian's popularity. Only those who had seen his drawing would understand the creepiness that they radiated. It was a style that could not be changed or mimicked. The characters looked like they were captured at the time of their death. Chen Gu shot a few short videos inside the haunted house to announce his return and used Yan Danian's name to start a serial comic called Ghost Tenants on the platform's forum. Very soon, Chen Ji's comments section exploded. With the combined promotion of online and offline activities, in less than 10 minutes, Western Zhejiang's House of Horrors became a hot topic search, and the popularity was still climbing. Chapter 304, Ghost Stories Night Qin Guang and Chen Ji's live streams were blocked at the same time, but Chen Gu had announced his return, whereas Qin Guang was still nowhere to be seen. A bunch of curious viewers swamped Chen Ji's comments, they wanted to know what had really happened that day. Chen Gu did not even tell the police about what really happened inside the third sick hall, naturally, he would not reveal the secrets to the viewers. He gave a few vague replies before going offline. It was then that his phone rang, it was a call from Lu Dao. Since they were once partners, Chen Gu accepted the call. Chen Gu, has the platform approached you to inform when your live stream will be unblocked? Not yet, but I believe it shall be soon. What's wrong? Live streaming was just another promotional method for Chen Gu, he did not worry over the details. As the fame of the haunted house grew, he had the intention of making the live stream a way of communicating with his fans, like releasing daily progression of the visitors and releasing information about new scenarios. It's like this. 
Our previous cooperation was really successful, so I want to do something similar, but something easier to control. Lu Dao had not given up yet. His cooperation with Qin Gu was the first time he had managed to face slap Qin Guang's studio ever since their falling out. What kind of idea do you have in mind? I will arrange a few of my most popular hosts to enter your haunted house to do a live stream. What do you think? Lu Dao anticipated Qin Ji's answer. Before asking Qin Gu, he had made multiple investigations already. It sounds like a great idea, but the timing is not right. You'll need to wait for a while first. Don't worry, we'll definitely give you a number that you'll be satisfied with. Furthermore, the live streams will help promote your haunted house, won't it? Lu Dao was an experienced member of the business, so he knew Qin Ji's concern. Plus, we will never leak the content of your haunted house. They'll use phones to carry out the live streams, so the quality will not be that clear. I don't have enough scenarios. I'll get back to you. Chen Gu did not want to expose the details of the haunted house, so he rejected Lu Dao in a roundabout way. Even though there were many detailed guides to Chen Ji's haunted house online, reading the guide and experiencing it were two different experiences. One had to experience terror to know how it would grip one's heart. After ending the call, before Chen Gu put the phone down, another call came in. He thought it was Lu Dao, so he was surprised when he saw that the call was from Captain Yen. He won't be bringing me good news, Chen Gu grumbled, having no idea the other person was thinking the same thing. Captain Yen? How can I help you? Chen Gu lay in bed and sighed. He was in a good mood that night. I heard from Inspector Li that you went to Lin Guan village last night. Compared to Chen Gu, Captain Yen sounded serious. He used this tone whenever a case was involved. Is there a problem with that village? Chen Gu sat up immediately. He did not think much of Lin Guan village, which was at the foot of the mountain. After all, the real scary village was Coffin village inside the mountain. Stay away from Lin Guan village, don't go there at night. Captain Yen seemed to have talked to Inspector Li before making this call and knew something about Chen Gu. Captain Yen, you have to be clearer than that, or you're just going to make me more interested. You should know about the poisoning case at Lin Guan Village, right? The only survivor of the family of four was a little girl. I do. In fact, I just met the girl at the children's home. The girl's previous caretaker was found dead inside an abandoned old house at Lin Guan Village. Captain Yan's voice was chillingly calm, but his suppressed anger could be heard. Why would the body be placed in Lin Guan Village? The first suspect that came to Chen Ji's mind was Jiang Ling's sister, but he had interacted with her before. Even though she had a monstrous exterior, internally, she was no different from a normal person. That is a question that confuses me as well. At the time, the case came to a standstill because of this as well. We traced back all the victims' words and actions for the few days prior and found something weird. Captain Yen sounded like he was hesitating over revealing this sensitive information to Chin Gu. After several seconds, he sighed. The victim utilized the channel she obtained through her career to purchase blood. Human blood? Yes, that was our only lead. Captain Yen reminded Chin Gu again. Do not go to Lin Guan village alone at night, at least before we have a clearer idea of what's going on. Then how long shall I wait? Chin Gu could wait, but the mission on the black phone could not. The three-star scenario, Coffin Village, would disappear in six days. The missions that passed their expiration date would not be unlockable in the future. At least until all the mental patients from the third sick hall have been caught. Speaking of this, Captain Yen felt a headache coming. Initially, they still acted rather normally, but after that incident at Fong Hua Apartments, we realized that we've greatly underestimated their lethality. Chen Gu heard the message that Captain Yen did not say. Is there another related case? I'm standing at the crime scene, dealing with the mess. Crime scene? Chen Gu slowed down. Someone died? Yes, two deaths to be precise, and the crime scenes are weird to say the least. The first victim was a burglar. 
According to the camera, the victim just committed a crime and escaped into the back alley, but he never exited it. A passing drunk called the police. The victim's eyes had been gouged out, and he died from an unknown cause. The second victim was a fugitive hiding in Jiujiang. He was found hanging in his rental room. If not for the gouged eyes, we wouldn't have tied the two cases together. Listening to the description, Chen Gu was confused. Why would they gouge out the victim's eyes? We're dealing with mental patients, so who really knows why? They're operating on a different worldview. Captain Yen sighed. In any case, these kinds of similar cases are due to something in the killer's history. The gouged eyes could be some sort of ritual, or the killer might have experienced trauma related to eyes when they were young. Or possibly this is just something to throw our investigation off. The chance of childhood trauma is big. The patients at the third sick hall were all traumatized when they were young. Chen Gu remembered what Captain Yen said. The killer was most likely the chairperson, he wanted to try his best to understand this sick man. Instead of the eyes, I'm more curious about another thing. There was a drumming on the table from the other side of the phone, Captain Yan's habit when he was thinking. Why would they purposely target these sinners? Are they trying to tell us they're different from normal criminals? Chapter 305, Linjiang New Schistosomiasis Control Station, they are indeed different from normal criminals. They have a purpose, and they're more insane. Chen Gu was reminded of a story he had heard while he was at the Ghost Story Society. The bunch of crazies once drowned a middle-aged man to help cure one of their partner's illness. Killing for the purpose of curing an illness? Captain Yen could not believe it. The patient was abused since she was a child, her father forced her head into the water many times. Curses and threats, claiming he was going to drown her. This left a mental scar that couldn't be forgotten. After she grew up, she had an irrational fear of water. Even when she drank normal water, she felt like it was suffocating her soul. Other patients thus drafted this treatment for her. It was to deal with the source of the fear. From their perspective, she wasn't afraid of water but her own father. This was the story that Chen Gu had overheard when Li Qi asked about other members of the society. The whole group of patients from the third sick hall are insane. They know they are not normal and are sick, but they do not approve of the traditional methods and intend on using their own methods to cure themselves. Chen Ji's words caused Captain Yen to think. Every citizen's personal safety is protected by the law, no one has the right to deprive another of their life. No matter their reason, they will never escape the persecution of the law. I'm not giving them a reason. I'm just telling you the truth. Chin Gu paced in the room. All the victims this time are sinners, and their eyes were gouged. The similarity is too obvious, so I believe this is another attempt at curing one of their members. What kind of belief will link trauma together with sin and eyes? Captain Yen thought Chin Gu had a point. That, I don't know, but you have to be fast. You found two victims, but based on my understanding of these people, their favorite number is three. You mean there will be a third victim? No matter what they do, they always aim for three. I don't understand why. Chen Gu told the police everything he knew. The society was his enemy, and helping the police was helping himself. Okay, we will pay closer attention to this. After the call ended, Chen Gu could not sleep. There are only three members left. Xiong Qing has been captured so he isn't one of the members. Plus, with his personality, he would expose me during the Wednesday meeting. From the list of patients that escaped from the third sick hall, only three confirmed living ones remain, Wang Xinglong, patient 6, Han Bauer, and patient 9, Wu Fei. Wang Xinglong was at home during the Wednesday meeting, and this was confirmed by the police. He isn't a society member, and the monster possessing him escaped silently from behind the door. Then this will lead to another problem. Of the three remaining members, only two came from the third sick hall. Chen Gu had plenty of information on the Ghost Story Society. He was familiar with the chairperson's voice, she was someone he had seen before, and then number 10 seemed to know him, but his stance was still an unknown. When the investigator jumped off the building, his dying words were Men Nan. 
Could the last unknown member be Men Nan? Chen Gu then soon vetoed this speculation. He could not trust the enemy's words fully. At the time, the investigator had been under the control of the society member, so his message could have been to lead him astray. Whether the investigator was lying or not, at least I garnered an important piece of information from him. The person controlling him knew about Men Nan, or else he wouldn't have left Men Nan's name at that crucial moment. Wu Fei is hiding in the shadowy corners of the city while Men Nan is the complete opposite. He's trying to live a normal life and can be found at any time. Neither of them are my opening. Chen Gu thought about it and decided to make Han Bao his next target. If I just send all of them into jail, then I won't need to waste time guessing who the chairperson is. Chen Gu cleared his mind and slowly fell asleep. At 8.30 a.m., Chen Gu stretched lazily in bed. He went for a shower, and when he passed the first floor toilet, his heart almost stopped. There was a very thin crack on the cubicle door. It looked like a narrowed eye looking at the world outside the door with evil intention. Something appeared behind the door at midnight last night and left this crack. After Chen Gu sealed the cubicle up with wooden boards, it had been relatively peaceful. He had thought that the problem was resolved and tossed it out of his mind. However, after discovering the crack, the anxiety in his heart returned. The crack is very even, and the surface is smooth. This should be a new ghost that I've not seen before. The world behind the door was still too unknown to Chen Gu, and he did not want to deal with them yet. The Ghost Story Society knows how to close the door, and Men Nan's main persona should know some secrets as well. Now that there's a change to this door inside my haunted house, the mission for the third sick hall cannot be delayed anymore. Chen Gu had a plan after he exited the toilet. The park opened at 9 a.m., and the resting tent at the door was filled up within 20 minutes. There were a few familiar faces. They were excited as they talked with their friends, their voices filled with anticipation. Every haunted house boss would love to see something like this. Their work is renowned and can bring in many visitors. Chen Gu put on Dr. Skullcracker's mask. It had not been easy leading the haunted house to this stage, he could not allow everything to go to ruin due to a door. Before the trial mission for Coffin Village disappears, I need to capture all the society members and get the way to close the door out of them. Filled with pointed hatred, Boss Chen gave the visitors a few authentic experiences. The screams inside the haunted house rose like waves and did not stop for the whole day. At 3 p.m., Captain Yen called Chen Gu several times. Chen Gu was busy chasing after visitors inside the haunted house, so he did not notice it. Chen Gu saw it when the park closed, and he immediately returned Captain Yan's calls. Captain Yan, you've caught the killer? Chen Gu wiped the makeup from his face and gave Su Wan the permission to leave. Captain Yan was silent, and after a long time, he said, We've found the third victim. It's an employee at Linjiang New Shistosomiasis Control Station. We found him in the same state as the other two victims. Chapter 306 Disappeared This was not the first time Chen Gu heard the name Linjiang New Shistosomiasis Control Station, but he had not had the time to go take a look. The time of death was last night? What Chen Gu predicted did happen, the Ghost Story Society seemed particularly obsessed with the number 3. The coroner believes the time of death is between 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. yesterday morning. Cause of death is still currently unknown. The victim is a worker, and he left work at 6 p.m. However, at 11 p.m., he sneaked back to this place. There is no camera inside the building, so no one knows what really happened. We only know that he didn't leave after he entered. The murders are very symbolic and ritualistic. Since the patients from the third sick hall have selected this worker, he must have done something wrong in the past, we should investigate that. We did, and the man is squeaky clean. He doesn't have a criminal record, and the other workers said he's an honest man and doesn't have any enemies or bad habits. Captain Yan's words confused Chen Gu. In his mind, the Ghost Story Society was very specific on their rituals, and rarely were they mistaken. Could that honesty be just a front? Perhaps he's a sinner within? Our investigation hasn't reached that part yet, so temporarily, 
we cannot make any conclusions. However, one thing's for certain, this victim is slightly different from the rest. Not only were his eyes gouged out, a painting was carved into his back. Can I take a look at that painting? Chin Ji's heart skipped. The crucial clue should be this painting. I have to follow the rules. Pictures of the crime scene mustn't be leaked. If you want to see it, then come here. Captain Yen did not agree to Chin Ji's demand. He made this call and gave Chin Gu all this information because Chin Gu was the only person who had interacted with the patients from the third sick hall. He was the person who was most familiar with that group of crazies other than the police. Okay, I'll be there in a minute. After hanging up, Chin Gu took out his phone and sat at the entrance to the haunted house to think. After I completed the nightmare mission for the first time, the mirror monster wanted to kill three people, and there was a corresponding number on the mirror that reflected the blood door. Is the ghost story society related to the door in such a way as well? Chin Gu soon reached Linjiang New Shistosomiasis control station in a taxi. This was somewhere isolated, and people rarely came here. Chin Gu found the officer on duty and explained his purpose. The officer did not let him into the crime scene but led him to one of the adjacent buildings. Captain Yan, Chin Gu is here. The officer called out Chin Ji's name directly. He no longer needed an introduction. Thank you. Captain Yen waved for Chin Gu to come closer. He placed the photos on the table. This is the most I can do for you. Chin Gu scanned all the pictures before stopping at a bloody picture of the victim's back. The victim's back was torn open, and a half-open door was carved in flesh and blood. Unlike the blood door Chin Gu saw on the society's flyer, in the middle of this door stood a little girl. She poked half of her face out and had a bright smile on her face. Did you discover anything? Captain Yen agreed to have Chin Gu come over because he believed that he could get some information from him. This little girl looks very familiar. Chin Gu did not sound like he was joking. He focused on that bloody picture. The blood hasn't even been cleaned yet. Can you really tell anything from these rough lines? Captain Yen had studied every photo on the table for a long time already. Yes, very familiar. Chin Gu picked up the picture and when he leaned in, a sense of familiarity appeared in his mind like he had seen this image before. He tried this several times before it hit him. Isn't this Jiang Ling? Chin Gu focused on the girl's face that was exposed outside the blood door. It reminded him of Jiang Ling when she ran over to give him the spider. The little girl from Lin Guan Village's poisoning case? Captain Yen was part of the investigation team responsible for that case so he was familiar with the girl's new name after she moved to Jiu Jiang's children's home. That's right. Chin Gu passed the photo to Captain Yen. Compare the face shape of the two children. Even though painting isn't that detailed, the general frame matches perfectly. Captain Yen looked at it. Initially, the name Jiang Ling did not even cross his mind, but now that Chin Gu mentioned it, he also felt it could be her. We've investigated Jiang Ling and her family, they have no connection with the patients from the third sick hall. They're a bunch of crazies who can do anything. They don't need reasons or connections. Chin Gu pulled out his phone to call the nurse. He wanted to make sure of Fan Yu and Jiang Ling's safety. The painting on the victim's back was hinting that their target was Jiang Ling. The girl was the only seed remaining from Coffin Village. Perhaps like Men Nan, she had once opened a door. The phone rang twice before a slightly alert voice said, Mr. Chen. Why are you calling so late at night? Can you give the phone to Fan Yu? I have something to tell him. They're in the middle of counseling with Dr. Chen. If this is nothing urgent, can you wait several minutes? As long as they're safe. Tell Fan Yu to call me back later. Chen Gu pocketed his phone. He looked at the photos and considered creating an ambush around Jiu Jiang's children's home. Captain Yen, I have a feeling that the murders are just a prelude. Most of the patients have been detained, and the remaining patients should be prepared something big. Indeed, things might get messy tonight. Captain Yen tapped his fingers on the table and turned to Chin Gu. You will stay with us tonight. 
Me? The real person they want to kill is you. Thinking about it, Chin Gu realized that Captain Yen had a point. After all, it was no inconvenience for him, he only swapped a place to sleep. If that could help capture the remaining Ghost Story Society's members, it would be a good thing. Captain Yen nodded after he got Chin Ji's agreement. They talked for another 20 minutes to discuss the details when Chin Ji's phone rang. He saw that it was from the nurse, so he picked it up naturally. Mr. Chen. Both Fan Yu and Jiang Ling have disappeared. I swear they were still inside the home this afternoon. The nurse's urgent voice came through the phone. I've already informed the president. Now everyone is looking for them. Disappeared. Chin Ji's eyes turned serious. Weren't they with that Dr. Chen? Get him to answer the phone. Dr. Chen has also disappeared. Everything in the room is tidy and untouched, but the person has disappeared. Wait for me, I'll be there in a minute. Chapter 307 Going home Chen Gu knew that the Ghost Story Society was going to make their move, but he did not expect it to be so soon. That Dr. Chen is suspicious. I've seen that name in the letters written by the third sick hall's old president, but they were addressed to Linjiang New Shistosomiasis Control Station. The surname Chen was very common, so when Chen Gu heard about Dr. Chen, he did not think much of it. After all, the letter was addressed to the control station, not Jiu Jiang's children's home. Jiang Ling has gone missing? Captain Yen looked at the picture on the table, he was getting more intrigued by Chen Gu. The man not only had very powerful observational skills but also a special instinct and talent, one that Captain Yen felt the man himself did not realize. Three people have gone missing. Fan Yu, Jiang Ling, and the doctor, who was supposed to be with them. The doctor is a patient in disguise? Captain Yen could not believe a patient would turn up as a doctor years later. We still cannot confirm that doctor's identity. After hanging up, Chen Gu forced himself to calm down. Based on his analysis, of the remaining three society members, two were from the third sick hall and one of them had met him in real life before. The one who was familiar with him could be the chairperson. He had met Dr. Chen once when he visited Jiu Jiang's children's home, so the chance of him being the chairperson was slim. Captain Yan, can you go through all the information on the workers here starting from five years ago, there might be a detail on the killer. The letter at the third sick hall was addressed to this place, so the old president's correspondent should have working here back then. Okay. I'll get Ol Wei to follow you to Jiu Jiang's children's home. Go take a look around and leave the investigation here to me. Captain Yen called Ol Wei over on the walkie-talkie. It was Ol Wei who had driven Chen Gu when they were saving Gu Feiyu. Chen Gu did not reject Captain Yan's kindness. He might need to travel to many places that night, and being with Ol Wei would be more convenient. Captain Yen, you're looking for me. Ol Wei would retire in a few months. Normally, Captain Yen would not send him to the front lines, he wanted to let the senior officer enjoy a few peaceful months before his retirement. You'll be partnering with Chin Gu tonight, take good care of him. Understood. When Captain Yen brought Ol Wei up to speed, Chin Gu was still trying to understand the connection between Jiang Ling, the Ghost Story Society, and the new Shistosomiasis control station. Chin Gu leaned against the table. There has to be a reason the Ghost Story Society selected their last victim from this place, and several years ago, the old president was also conversing with someone working here. The key question is, what is the connection between the new Shistosomiasis control station and the girl from Coffin Village? Chin Gu, don't waste time. Both of you move out immediately. Captain Yen patted Chin Ji's shoulders. He assumed that Chen Gu was worried about Fan Yu and Jiang Lin. I'm sure the two kids are safe. I'm thinking about something else. Chen Gu suddenly turned around to face Captain Yen. You told me before that Jiang Ling's former caretaker was found inside an old home at Lin Guan Village. Yes. Captain Yen did not know where Chen Gu was going with this. That person bought blood before she died. Chen Ji's eyes sparkled. There has to be a connection between Jiang Ling, this new Shistosomiasis control station, 
and the patients from third sick hall, and I believe that connection is related to blood. You misunderstood something, this new schistosomiasis control station doesn't have blood storage. Captain Yen shook his head. This place mainly deals with prevention of diseases contracted via blood. You can call it a specialist hospital. Then could there be another possibility? They're breeding a special kind of parasite that needs human blood to survive? Or it's not a parasite but something else that need human blood to survive? The patients need this, and Jiang Ling has this. Chen Gu voiced his opinion, and it confused Captain Yen and Ou Wei. Chen Gu only explained half of his thought, Jiang Ling was Coffin Village's final seed. Most of villagers from that village were born with abnormalities, and the rate of occurrence was too high to be explained by close marriage. Chen Gu now suspected that the abnormality was caused by this thing. Go to the children's home first. I'll have someone inspect the station closely. If there's any update, I'll inform you. Captain Yen thought about what Chen Gu said, and he believed it could be a good opening. Be careful, it's best if the investigation is done in groups. Chen Gu was worried. The thing the society wanted might not be a physical parasite, it could be a curse or even a rare specter. The sky was dark when Ol Wei drove Chen Gu to the children's home in the police car. When they arrived, the old guard and nurse were already waiting for them. We cannot find them, and the camera at the front door didn't catch them. They should have slipped out through another channel. The guard was feeling guilty. Bring us to the room where Fan Yu and Jiang Ling were last seen. If this was really the society, then it was normal for them to miss the clues. Follow me. The nurse led Chen Gu into the counseling room. The room was painted brightly and could make people feel relaxed as they walk in. At 4 p.m., the two children were still playing in here, but when I came to take a look, they had disappeared, the nurse explained as she fidgeted all over the place. Calm down. Chen Gu did not touch anything in the room and just looked around. There's no sign of struggle, and everything is in its place, the two children probably left voluntarily. Could it be Dr. Chen who brought them away? Impossible. Dr. Chen is a good man. He had saved many children here, giving them the courage to face life again. The nurse's voice turned loud, she refused to accept this reality. Sometimes a good person and a bad person is just a thought away. Chen Gu walked to the table where he saw several weird drawings. In the first drawing, two black people were sitting in the middle, and a red person with a long body reached in through the window. This should be Fan Yu's, he's leaving me clues. Chen Gu picked up the drawing. The black ones are people, and red ones, ghosts. Looks like the society has really targeted Jiang Ling. He flipped over to the second picture, and a red woman shaped like a spider tore the ghost that was reaching through the window apart. She seemed to be feasting. Jiang Ling's sister saved them. Of course, with Jiang Ling's sister around, unless the society came with full force, they wouldn't be able to hurt them. Chen Gu turned to the third drawing. Under the protection of the spider lady, the two black people walked into a door, and beside the door was something written in red crayon, going home. Chapter 308, I want to go take a look, since he still had time to draw, this means that both of them aren't injured. They probably left on their own since they sensed danger coming. Chen Gu had never treated Fan Yu and Jiang Ling as normal children. What are you looking at? Ou Wei and the nurse wandered over. They saw the writing on the paper. Going home? What does it mean? Before they became orphans, they had their own home. When he saw these words, the first thing that entered Chen Ji's mind was Lin Guan Village, that was the place Jiang Ling grew up. Brief the situation here to Captain Yan, tonight. We might be heading to somewhere remote. Okay. Chen Gu turned to look at the fourth drawing that was at the very bottom. It was a broken home drawn in black, and something that looked like a coffin was leaning against its left wall. The third picture is entering the door, and this last picture is a home. Fan Yu is trying to tell me the door's location? He folded the last drawing and pocketed it. Based on his speculation, the door that Fan Yu and Jiang Ling entered should be hiding inside this old home with a coffin. 
Last time I entered Linguan village, I didn't see anyone placing coffin outside their door. The home and fan use painting should be referring to coffin village inside the mountains. The people had disappeared, and the only way to clarify this speculation was to go coffin village personally. Chen Gu took a deep breath. I have to find them as soon as possible. After entering the door, it will be difficult for them to leave. Mr. Chen, do you think anything will happen to Jiang Ling and Fan Yu? The nurse asked with worry. Chen Gu looked at the nurse and placed the drawings down. There was another question that needed answering. None of Fan Yu's four drawings featured Dr. Chen. What kind of role did the doctor play in this disappearance? If Dr. Chen was a member of the Ghost Story Society, why did the thin monster in Fan Yu's drawing come from outside the window and not from Dr. Chen's back? Based on Chen Ji's understanding of the Ghost Story Society, after the ghost possessing someone was torn open, the human would suffer mental pain and faint, but Dr. Chen could not be found at the scene. The guy is not simple, I have to be careful. After consoling the nurse, Chen Gu and Ou Wei left Jiu Jiang's children's home. I've already reported what happened here to Captain Yen, where are we going now? Back to New Century Park first, I need to go grab some tools. The society had lost three quarters of their member in a week, they had been forced to jump the gun, so naturally, Chen Gu would not be careless. Ou Wei did not question Chen Gu, the order that he had received from Captain Yen was just to protect Chen Gu. When they arrived at New Century Park, Chen Gu rushed into the haunted house to grab the hammer, the recorder, pen spirit, and Xiao Xiao. Then he took the comic from Western Zhoujiang's private academy and invited the boy with the stench and the hanging student to join him. If Zhang Ya was here, then this wouldn't be so troublesome. Chen Gu looked at the bulging backpack and sighed. I still don't feel safe. He glanced at the white cat that was laying on the table biting its tail. He thought about it and picked up the cat. There's a saying in the countryside that ghosts are afraid of cats. With the white cat looking at him with confusion, Chen Gu placed it in another bag. Having fed you for so long, I'll depend on you tonight. Before the cat could react, Chen Gu rushed out of the haunted house carrying the two large bags. Inside the car, Chen Gu opened the bag for the cat to breathe. Oh Wei, start the car. Today, we're going to Lin Guan village at the edge of the mountain. Ou Wei's face turned with curiosity when he saw Chen Gu enter the car with the two large bags. He thought Chen Gu had overreacted. After all, from a normal person's perspective, between looking for missing children and the group of murderers going around gouging people's eyes out, the latter obviously was more dangerous. What are you carrying? Why do I hear a cat meowing? Ou Wei started the car. He had been on the same team as Captain Yen for the poisoning case so he knew the village's location. My cat can protect us from curses. Whatever you say. At 10 p.m., they finally arrived at Lin Guan village. As the car stopped, Chen Gu jumped out of the car and raced into the village with the white cat trailing behind him. Wait for me. Ou Wei parked the car, and when he looked out, Chen Gu had already disappeared. Chen Gu took out Fan Yu's drawing and compared it to the buildings inside the village. There was a road leading to Lin Guan village, but it was a halted project. It ended at the entrance to the village. The surrounding buildings were abandoned, and all the houses were locked. It's only just gone ten, but the village is already completely dark. Similar to his last visit, Chen Gu could not see another living person inside the village. Don't wander around like this, you're going to cause unnecessary misunderstanding. Ou Wei finally caught up to Chen Gu and quickly rushed over to drag him out of the village. Then what do you suggest we do? How about we find someone to ask? Ou Wei knocked on one of the doors. Initially, the man had a bad attitude, but after Ou Wei showed his badge, the villager obediently opened the door and welcomed them in. Did you see a middle-aged man around 30 leading two kids into Lin Guan village today? Ou Wei asked directly. A child kidnapper? Their host was an honest farmer. Just answer the question. No, people rarely come to this place anymore. When they were talking, Chen Gu looked around the room. There was a small shrine, 
and on top of it was a black and white picture of an old day. Other than that, the place was a normal farmer's home. Look at this drawing, does this village have something similar? Chin Gu placed Fan Yu's drawing before the farmer. He scratched his head. What is this? Is that a shelf beside the house? That's a coffin. Chin Gu said and this caused the other two to go silent. Who would leave a coffin by the door? We don't have that here. The farmer sneaked a look at Chin Gu. For some reason, he felt afraid of the man. I'll ask you another question, do you know Coffin Village inside the mountain? When Chin Gu said Coffin Village, the farmer's eyes twitched, and he grabbed the water to hide his panic. Why are you asking that? The place was cursed by an epidemic. Those who didn't die escaped. None of the villagers here dare bring up that name lest we too get cursed. Looks like you do know about the village. Do you know where it is? Chin Gu spoke calmly, but his gaze was scary. I want to go to take a look. Chapter 309, Black and White Photo, Now? Are you kidding? The farmer stammered. Yes, now. My two kids are missing, and they might have wandered into Coffin Village. Chin Gu could not afford to delay this any longer. The mountains were hard to trek through, and the two kids might get into some accident. Go ask another family. The water in the host's cup spilled out. He was clearly nervous and afraid. I've only heard about the stories from the older generation, I don't really know the location. He noticed Chin Ji's gaze changing, like it was turning colder, so he immediately added, you can ask the seniors in the village. They must know something. I can bring you to go meet them. When the farmer said so, Chin Gu nodded. Please. Of course, of course. The farmer wiped the sweat from his brow and went inside the house to look for a flashlight. Chin Gu, be careful, don't scare the poor man, Ol Wei, who stood beside Chin Gu, reminded him. To be honest, he was worried about partnering up with Chin Gu especially when he thought back to the things that Chin Gu had done. I know what I'm doing, Chin Gu said softly. Now was not the time to mind the details, they needed to find the children first. I've heard from my grandparents that the village once accepted a group of people who escaped from the mountain, they should come from Coffin Village. The farmer walked out with the flashlight. Those people are staying at the western side of the village, and the rest of us live on the east side. Normally, we have no interaction. Before my grandmother passed away, she used to tell me that those people aren't clean. The farmer was honest and did not hide anything from Chin Gu and Ol Wei. At the time, I secretly mocked her for believing in something like that in this day and age. I just brushed it off as her superstition, but as time went by, I realized that there was something off about these people. What do you mean? Chin Gu and Ol Wei were curious. They rarely leave their homes, especially after the sun has fallen, like there are things waiting to harm them outside, the farmer said softly. Every one of their houses has a rope hanging across the window and a cleaver hidden behind the door. I asked them once why they did that, and they said it was to prevent thieves. That's all? There's also one very strange thing. The farmer's voice turned even smaller. Every few days, one of them will go missing, but they never seem worried. If anything, they appear very happy just like. Like what? Tell us, Chin Gu urged. Just like as long as it wasn't them who got caught. The farmer's words were a bit accusatory, and it made Chin Gu and Ol Wei silent. I'm just sharing my thoughts. Please don't read too much into it, the farmer quickly explained. The trio walked to the middle of the village and turned left. After a short walk, they saw a broken brick home. Here we are. The farmer prepared to knock on the door, but when his hands fell on the door, it swung open on its own. Elder Zhu? He walked into the room, but he only took one step before he froze. On the dining table facing the door sat an old man's black and white picture. The old man's face in the picture was looking at the door, and the scariest thing was, the eyes in the picture were gouged out. Don't panic. Chin Gu patted the farmer on his shoulder. He strode into the room without putting on the light and picked up the black and white photo from the table. 
The picture looks old, and the edges are worn. He probably knew this day was coming a long time ago. Thinking about what the farmer said earlier, Chen Gu believed that the old man in the photo had gone missing. The people who escaped from Coffin Village hang rope across the window and hid a cleaver behind the door. Obviously, they are afraid of something getting in. Chen Gu scratched his chin. Could it be the monster from Coffin Village? Also why are the eyes gouged out in the picture? This is too similar to the ghost story society's MO. Big brother, can you please put the picture down? I have a feeling he's looking at me for some reason. The farmer stood at the door and showed no intention of coming in. Shall we move on to another family? Sure, let's go ask them about Elder Zhu. The trio went to the house next door. Before they reached it, Chen Gu had a bad feeling. With Yin Yang vision, he could clearly see that the family's door was open. As he expected, the family residing there was also missing. Creepily enough, there was also a black and white picture on the table, and the eyes were also gouged out. Where are they? The farmer led Chen Gu and Ou Wei here. The two outsiders didn't say anything but the locals started to panic. Let's go look at the other homes first. They looked through other homes, and it was as if all the people who escaped from Coffin Village had disappeared. There were black and white pictures on the table, and the whole village felt like a ghost village. What is going on? The farmer's face was blanched, and he turned to Chen Gu and Ou Wei for help. Looking at his inquisitive gaze, Chen Gu pulled out his backpack to grip the hammer. Everyone has disappeared, but why are you still here? Chen Gu told the farmer that, and it honestly freaked him out. I really don't know. The mouth of the village still has a few families from by family village, they should be fine. The farmer was proven right. Only those from Coffin Village were missing. Chen Gu, where do you think those people have disappeared to? And why did they leave behind these black and white photos? Ol Wei had a feeling that things were heading down a weird direction. They probably returned to the Coffin Village. Chen Gu took out Fan Yu's third drawing, which read, Going home. We cannot wait any longer. We need to enter the mountains now. He walked to the farmer. Someone at the village has to know how to get to Coffin Village, right? Several lives are at risk, please show us your cooperation. Brother, I really want to help you, but the people who knew about the village are either missing or dead or too old. The farmer staggered back and stopped beside Ol Wei. Too old? Chin Gu suddenly thought about a suitable candidate. He called Ol Wei and headed for the peach plantation in the mountain. Master Bai should know where Coffin Village is. Hopping over the mountain, Chin Gu found Master Bai inside the wooden hut. After explaining his intention, the old man pretended not to know anything. However, when he heard two kids might have been kidnapped and taken to Coffin Village. He agreed to take them into the mountain. Chapter 310, Move Faster, Chen Gu, should we wait for Captain Yan's support team to come before we head into the mountain together? Ol Wei looked at his phone that had no signal, the time shown was 0.50 am. It takes at least one hour to come from Jiujiang to Linguan village. If we need to wait for them to enter the mountain, the sun will have already risen. Chen Ji's group had been walking through the forest for almost two hours, but there was still no sign of any village. All they could see were mountains and mountains. But can we do this with just the three of us? Ol Wei was worried that if there was a real altercation, they probably still needed to worry about Master Bai. That shouldn't be a problem. Chen Gu had initially been worried about Master Bai's physical condition, but after one hour of trekking, he realized that his worry was unfounded. Master Bai was healthy since he had grown up in the mountain and knew the local geography very well. What are you two mumbling about? Master Bai walked in front with a branch. A few more steps, and we'll reach a fork in the fork. If we take the road going over the mountain top, we'll need to walk for another two hours, but if we take the shortcut that crosses through the mountain valley, we'll only need thirty minutes before we reach Coffin Village. Which one should we take? Is the shortcut not an easy path to trek? Chen Gu clearly understood that since Master Bai had brought it up, something had to be wrong with that path. Yes. 
Master Bai's face was serious. The mountain valley is haunted. Hauntings are fine. I thought you're going to say that it is home to wolf dens. Chen Gu patted his backpack, and the white cat poked its head out with dissatisfaction. Now, I'm curious. In your world, why are wolves more terrifying than ghosts? Master Bai leaned against the branch. He could not understand Chen Ji's way of thinking. Ghosts are immaterial, but wolves are real. Ou Wei did not believe in the talk of ghosts. Chen Gu rolled his eyes but did not argue. We'll trek through the valley. Are you sure? There are things in this world that can't be explained. Master Bai once again asked for their opinion. Master Bai, did something happen to you before? Chen Gu saw the unnatural expression on the old man's face. He was really reluctant to go through the valley. You are very familiar with this path, so you must have taken it more than once already. We're doing this to save the children, so I hope you won't purposely hide something from us. I'm not trying to, but I'm afraid you won't believe me even if I tell you. Master Bai shared the events from his youth. My father knew a thing or two about medicine. In the forties, when there was an epidemic of the measles, he trekked through the mountains to help all the nearby villages, and it was then that he discovered Coffin Village. This village is isolated from the world, and there weren't many who even knew how to read. They depended on folk remedy for their sickness, and when my father arrived, the condition of the village was very serious. To save the villagers of Coffin Village, my father paid the place several visits. At the time, I was still young, and my father wanted me to take over his practice. After all, a doctor is more respected than a farmer, so he would bring me on these visits. Everything was fine the first few times, but there was that one time my father got into an argument with one of the villagers. I'm not sure what the cause was. Normally, we left at 2 p.m., but that day, when we left Coffin Village, it was already late afternoon. However, since the sun hadn't fallen, we decided to trek through the valley. Halfway through, my father suddenly urged me to move faster. All I was thinking about then was the hot meal at home, so I did run faster. However, after some time, my father urged me again from behind, telling me to run even faster. It was then that I realized something was wrong. I was about to turn around and ask him what was wrong when he used his hand to cover my eyes. All he said was for me to move faster. I peeked through the slit in his fingers, and I saw someone leaning on my father's back. My father's face was white, and he walked behind me, pushing me forward. Perhaps due to his regular acts of charity, the thing on his back didn't harm him. However, I remember that when we entered the valley, the sky was bright, but when we exited it, the sky was completely dark. After that, my father fell seriously ill, and we stopped visiting Coffin Village. Even now, I have no idea what the source of the argument was or what the thing that was leaning on his back was. Master Bai sounded sad when he told this tale. Chen Gu understood why Master Bai would feel so guilty for not helping Jiang Ling's sister. He had seen a ghost when he was young, so he believed these things more than most. Do you still plan to go through the valley? Master Bai asked. The detour will take too much time, we'll take the valley. Chen Gu gripped the pen spirit. The two of you can walk in, and I'll close up the back. Are you sure you can do that? Originally, that was the role assigned to Ol Wei. He had been making marks on trees as they moved through the forest. Master Bai wanted to advise Chen Gu, but he remembered what had happened that night. Chen Gu chased Jiang Ling's sister out of the room and even seemed like he was trying to communicate with her. The old man's lips twitched. Now he suspected that Chen Gu had purposely told them to use the shortcut through the valley because he heard it was haunted. Why are you two looking at me? Don't worry, let's go. Chen Gu did not feel panic. His backpack had a white cat, so if the ghost wanted to have someone to lean on, it would attack the white cat first. He nuzzled the cat's head gently before following Master Bai and Ol Wei into the valley. The trees became more common and twisted like everything around them was changing. Move faster, we must leave within twenty minutes. Master Bai's emotions were shaking. He looked nervous, 
probably because the memory from his youth was returning. Chin Gu, you be careful at the back. Ol Wei walked in the middle. Although he gave Chin Gu a reminder, he did have some faith in the lad. They walked for five minutes before the narrow path became completely covered by brush and branches. They could see half-buried coffins by the side of the road. The coffins looked like they were placed there on purpose. Some of them were not even closed. Don't be afraid. Master Bai's voice was shaking. He forced himself to calm down. This is Coffin Village's tradition. These are all empty coffins. They line the side of the road in increasing height, representing moving higher in life. Not really afraid, but I agree that we should move faster. Chen Gu turned to look behind him, and a shadow seemed to be trailing them. He did not tell Ol Wei or Master Bai about this. He rummaged in his bag for something. Only one? Don't say I'm bullying you with my advantage in numbers. Completed Novel House Chapter 311, You Done Crying? Master Bai and Ol Wei rushed ahead, but Chen Gu purposely slowed down to put some distance between them. This should be good enough. Ol Wei and Master Bai are still in my sight, I don't need to worry about losing them. Chen Gu placed the recorder in his hand but did not look back, he just pretended like nothing was happening. The wind in the valley stilled, and the surroundings became quiet, as if they had gone through some limit and entered a different world. The temperature dropped, and Chen Gu could feel a cold draft encroaching. It's coming. Perhaps because he had the white cat as a meat shield, Chen Gu walked forward with ease. When the cold draft was just three meters away from Chen Gu, it suddenly stopped like it could sense something. I haven't even turned the recorder on yet, why did it stop? Chen Gu gauged the distance in his heart. He pretended like he was afraid and scared, shaking too much to move forward. He slowed down again, trying his best to lure the ghost to attack him. Why isn't it coming? Does it want me to lean back to knock into it? Chen Gu was seriously considering walking backward. He had confidence in his acting, but he was afraid his unusual movement might scare the monster off. I should wait a little while longer. The road narrowed, and it was almost swallowed up by brush and branches. Even Master Bai and Ol Wei had to slow down to deal with the blockage. Chen Gu knew that he could not make it too obvious. If the monster was not going to take his bait, then so be it. He walked forward to help Master Bai. However, the moment he picked up speed, perhaps panicking, the monster finally made its move. Chilliness climbed all over his heart, and this familiar feeling reminded Chen Gu of his first date when Zhang Ye stood behind him. The hairs on his neck rose, and the temperature dropped even more as iciness surrounded him. Before Chen Gu could do anything, the white cat in his backpack suddenly squeezed its way out. It meowed at him twice before running away. You coward. Don't they say cats have nine lives? Well, at least the white cat warned him before it left. The chill grabbed Chen Ji's shoulders like a pair of hands. This feels familiar. A woman's sobbing came from behind Chen Gu. It sounded scary and sad. Weirdly enough, it seemed like only Chen Gu could hear this. Master Bai and Ol Wei were busy with their own stuff and did not seem to hear anything. Iciness curled into his heart, and his shoulders slowly slumped from the pressure. Chen Gu was reminded of Master Bai's story. The old man's father should have been experiencing this kind of pain then. To protect Master Bai, he had forced himself to carry the ghost the entire journey. His body turned heavier, and there was a pulling force coming from behind him like it was trying to pull Chen Gu into one of the open coffins. Is it what they call a scapegoat? The air seemed to freeze into ice, and it froze up Chen Ji's lungs. The crying beside his ears influenced Chen Ji's thought. The trees around him moved like they were coming alive. The sobbing echoed in Chen Ji's mind, and a pale white face slowly appeared from Chen Ji's back. It leaned toward Chen Ji's ears, but before it could say anything, Chen Gu suddenly turned around. You done crying? The face stopped on Chen Ji's shoulders, its dark abyss of a mouth wide open. If you're done crying, then be on your way. Chen Gu pressed the recorder, 
and Su Yin appeared in half a red shirt to yank the monster off from Chen Ji's back. Before it could resist, it was torn into pieces and consumed by Su Yin. The screams echoed through the woods, and even Chen Gu thought Su Yin was a bit cruel. If you're not done crying, why didn't you tell me? I'm a reasonable person. When Su Yin finished his feast, the blood stain on his shirt grew. Based on this speed, it would not be long until he became a real red specter. Chen Gu. What are you doing back there? Don't stay too far from us. Master Bai waved at Chen Gu. They did not notice anything weird until Su Yin disappeared. With their sense of alertness, without Chen Gu, both of them would have been pulled into the coffins already. Coming. Chen Gu pocketed the recorder, and the white cat, which had escaped earlier, returned. It jumped on Chen Ji's shoulder and refused to enter the backpack again. A life of contentment has dulled your survival instincts. You weren't this cowardly before. Looks like I'll need to bring you out with me more in the future. Chen Gu nudged the cat's face. This is for your own good. After catching up to Ol Wei, Chen Gu suddenly realized that since the ghost had been eaten directly by Su Yin, he was not even sure what kind of power it had. It's probably a normal ghost. There's so many coffins, it should have friends. With Master by leading way, they used 20 minutes to exit the valley. Thank God nothing happened. Master Bai was covered in cold sweat. We were lucky this time. We'll reach the place after 10 minutes or so. Before entering the coffin village, let me go talk to them first. He stared at Chen Gu. After we're in the village, no matter what happens, do not act rashly. I'm considered a village friend, let me handle this. You've been back here for decades already, do you think they will still give you face? Furthermore, the villagers knew you might not even be alive anymore. Chen Gu was telling the truth. In comparison, I know about their culture better than you do. We're here to find people, not to wage a war. It's better not to make enemies. Master Bai tried his best to advise Chen Gu. He was afraid that he might do something dumb. We'll do what you say. Ol Wei dragged Chen Gu. Finding the children is more important. Master Bai did not continue this topic. He pointed the cat on Chen Ji's shoulders. Keep your cat inside your bag or else the villagers will kill it on sight. They don't keep cats to deal with rats? Don't you say every family has a coffin? Aren't they afraid rats might bite through the wood? Chen Gu chased the cat for a long time before he caught it and shoved it inside the bag. There are not many living creatures inside this village. In fact, I've not seen them rear livestock, the old man said. I'll tell you about it as we walk. The village has many weird taboos, and they look different from normal humans, so you'd better be prepared. Chapter 312 Don't knock on the door at night after leaving the valley, his phone completely lost its signal. The electric compass that Chen Gu downloaded beforehand malfunctioned as well. Something told him that the world inside and outside the valley were different. Perhaps because he had met plenty of ghosts, he was sensitive to these things. He tipped his head back and glanced through the canopy. There was no moon or stars in the sky. The night was like a cloth smothering them no matter where they went. Be careful, we've almost reached the place. After another ten minutes of walking, Chen Ji's group finally left the jungle. They looked down the horizon, and what they saw confused and shocked them. Those are, lanterns? Ol Wei touched Master Bai's shoulder, but this was also the first time Master Bai had come to Coffin Village at night. I have no clue. He took out a piece of jade and wore it around his neck. I'll scout ahead. Stay close to me, don't wander off. The three of them walked toward the village, and the shapes of the buildings became clearer and clearer. No one would have expected a village to be hidden in such a desolate place. All the buildings were built in a style from decades ago, they looked old and abandoned, but the most curious point was every family had a white lantern hanging before the door. The lanterns were like white eyeballs, hanging by the side of the road, staring at the three newcomers. There were people inside the village. This village that was supposedly abandoned decades ago due to an epidemic still had people living there. 
Master Bai, are you going to enter just like this? Ou Wei moved to stand beside Chen Gu. He still remembered Captain Yan's order. His mission that night was to protect Chen Gu. Let me think about this. Master Bai looked at the empty village and the white lanterns that lined the road, and his palms were covered with cold sweat. In the past, my father always came in the morning, so I had no idea this is how Coffin Village looks at night. With the bitter smile on his face, Master Bai's meaning was clear, he did not want to enter the village. Of the three of them, he was the only one who had entered Coffin Village before. He understood the creepiness of the village, and if morning was already so scary, night did not bear thinking about. Don't panic, we don't need to enter directly. Ou Wei then patted Chen Gu on his shoulder. How about we take a look around the village first? Chen Gu did not answer, and he stood at the back of the party alone. His expression was unreadable. What's wrong with you? Ou Wei was worried about Chen Gu. Even though he admitted Chen Gu could be a bit rash, he had to admit that facing the entrance to this ghost village, standing beside Chen Gu gave him the most security. I'm thinking about something. Chen Gu shrugged and lowered his head to look at the black phone. When they neared the village, Chen Ji's black phone had vibrated, and he had received a new message. Congratulations, Spectres favored. You found Coffin Village deep inside the mountain. Do you wish to accept the trial mission for the three-star scenario, Coffin Village? What's on your mind, why don't you share it with us? Ol Wei and Master Bai walked close to him. Thanks, but I've already made up my mind. Chen Gu clicked on the accept key. Coffin Village, three-star scenario survive until morning inside Coffin Village, and the new scenario will be unlocked. Mission hint, that day, other than me, they all came. Memorizing the mission hint, Chen Gu pocketed the black phone and turned to look at Coffin Village, shrouded in darkness. Let's go, we'll go take a look. Are you sure? Ol Wei grabbed Chen Ji's arm and gave Master Bai a look, hoping that the old man would help him convince Chen Gu. However, the night was too dark for Master Bai to see it. I've already made up my mind. Chen Ji's consideration was different from Ol Wei's. Stop arguing. It should be fine for us to enter the village. Even though the villagers look strange, they're quite kind. Master Bai had interacted with Coffin Village's people before, so he had the most right to speak. Master Bai, are you sure these kind villagers would light white lanterns at night? Of the three, Ol Wei was the most rational. Master Bai touched the jade around his neck like he was remembering something from long ago, my father once told me, a bunch of poor people are living inside the village. He said that when I master medicine, I should go help them. When Chin Ji's Yin Yang vision caught sight of Master Jade's jade necklace, he felt pain in his eye. However, that pain only lasted for a second. If he was not sensitive enough, he would not have noticed it. Master Bai, your father left you the necklace? Yes, he would wear it whenever he went out to help people. After we came out from Coffin Village for the last time, he gave it to me and then soon after he fell ill. There's more to this necklace than meets the eye. Chin Gu wanted to study it. He had run into ghosts and monsters many times already and had been trying to find something that could affect them. He had been searching for weeks, but he had only found a butcher's cleaver. My father said that others cannot touch the jade or it'll lose its powers. Master Bai seemed to be telling the truth. I cannot give you the necklace, so you'd better stay close to me tonight. Master Bai, can you remember other things that your father told you? Ol Wei asked. We're entering the village, so you need to tell us everything. That's all I believe. He told me, no matter where I go, I have to face my conscience and those with a clean conscience will be protected by both humans and ghosts. When he said so, Chen Gu understood why the old man was so focused on helping Jiang Ling and her sister. Master Bai's family was good-hearted people. Chen Gu had his own philosophy and had been following his own conscience. He has a point, but ghosts are like people, there are good ghosts and evil ghosts. The three walked around the outer perimeter of Coffin Village. The village was very big. To get an overall view of the village, they needed to climb up to the adjacent hill. 
there are probably more than a hundred families living inside the village. Be careful not to get into an altercation with them. Master Bai was mainly talking to Chen Gu. We'll go in through the entrance, there's no need to hide. Thus, the three entered Coffin Village. The road was overgrown with grass, and the houses on both sides were closed. Weirdly enough, the doors were not pasted with the common pictures of door guardians but white paper with the character, Good Fortune, turned upside down. It looked scary. The culture here seems to be the total opposite of the outside world. Chen Gu stopped before one of the doors. Shall we go in? It's rude to barge in like that. Ol Wei moved his hand to the gun in his holster. This place gave him plenty of pressure. We're here to look for the children. Eventually we need to interact with the villagers. We will need Master Bai's help to liaise with them. Chen Gu raised his arm, and when his hand almost reached the door, the white lantern hanging above the door suddenly went out. Chapter 313, Three Rooms The Sudden Disappearance of the Light Cast Where Chen Ji's group was standing into darkness. What's happening? Both Master Bai and Ol Wei were spooked. Chen Ji's hand hung in midair and did not fall on the door. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem like a coincidence. There was no wind, and the lantern was hung high enough that they would notice if someone reached out to extinguish the light. The other white lanterns swayed even though there was still no wind. It felt weirdly suffocating. Chen Gu and Ol Wei turned to look at Master Bai, but he had not experienced this before either. Shall we retreat for now? He walked two steps back and turned to look down the road, then he stopped. Be careful, someone's coming. Who? Chen Gu looked down the direction Master Bai was looking. Under the glow of the swaying lanterns, a blurry human-shaped shadow slowly approached them. It seems to be waving at us. The shadow moved faster, and Chen Gu finally got a good look at it. It was an old lady who was wearing a dark-colored jacket. She kept her head lowered as she moved forward, and she only stopped when she almost ran into Chen Gu. You also came from the outside? The old lady's voice was weird and made Chen Gu feel uncomfortable. Noticing the old lady's choice of words, Chen Gu asked in return, also? There's another party that entered the village earlier? Yes. The woman kept her head lowered when she spoke like she was afraid of others seeing her face. Chen Gu was reminded of Jiang Ling's sister. The villagers of Coffin Village were born with abnormalities, so Chen Gu would not be rude enough to purposely sneak a look at the old lady's face. Was it a middle-aged man and two kids who entered the village before us? Chen Gu asked a follow-up question, but the old lady ignored him. It seemed like she was not there for Chen Gu. Keeping her head lowered, it felt like the old lady's head was almost falling to the ground. However, she did not seem bothered by this. Don't knock on the door at night. It might not be people who answer the door. It was unclear who the old lady was talking to. She blocked them in the middle of the road, and the lanterns on both sides swayed harder. Things have been complicated in the village lately. Don't wander about. Come with me, I'll bring you somewhere to stay. The old lady turned to head back in the direction she came from. Her steps were small, but she moved fast. Combined with her head that almost reached her chest, the whole thing was just weird. Shall we follow her? Ol Wei turned to look at Chen Gu and Master Bai. When he saw the old lady earlier, he already wanted to leave. Let's follow her for now. It was Master Bai who spoke. I feel familiar around the old lady. Is it possible that I've seen her when I came to visit as a child? Master Bai walked ahead, and Chen Gu as well as Ol Wei followed behind him. The old lady led them deeper into Coffin Village. They took several turns before they stopped. Tonight, you can stay here. We can discuss the rest when morning comes. She still kept her head lowered, and the tone of her voice had not changed, it felt like they were talking to a puppet. There are three rooms inside the house. Each of you can take one. Remember to stay inside your room, and do not share rooms. Do not touch the rope on the window or the cleaver behind the door. Stay in bed and wait for the night to pass. 
One room each. We'll share one room, it'll be fine for one night. Master Bai had to stay close to Chen Gu. If he did not keep a good watch on him, he would run off on his own. There are three rooms inside the house, each of you can take one. To their surprise, when Master Bai said so, the old lady only repeated her earlier instruction, but this time, her tone was uglier. Granny, we're here to look for two children. We have no time to waste, especially not until morning. Can you bring us to meet the other group who came from outside? Chen Gu studied the old woman and could not find anything weird about her. Could it really be her face? When the old lady turned around, Chen Gu bent down to glance at her face. The face was totally normal. The eyes are still there, and the face looks normal, but she does look familiar, Chen Gu thought to himself. He looked at the old lady and then glanced at Master Bai. Master Bai, you said the old lady gives you a sense of familiarity, could she be from Lin Guan village? I didn't see her face, but based on her attire, you might be right. Master Bai pushed the door open. The place was not big. Looks like someone from Lin Guan village and familiar to you and me. Chin Gu thought about it, and his face slowly changed. Wait, I know who she is. Who? Oh Wei, do you still remember the first home we visited when we arrived at Lin Guan village? Yes, the owner was a middle-aged farmer. Oh Wei had good memory. He has a shrine in his room, and an old lady's black and white photo sat on it. Chin Gu kept his voice lowered. The old lady who showed us the way earlier looks exactly like the old woman in that picture. How is that possible? Are you sure? Ol Wei couldn't believe Chen Gu. Now that you mention it, she does look like an old lady from Lin Guan village. Master Bai made the connection in his mind. But that old lady died a long time ago. No matter what, it has happened. Chen Gu calmed down quickly. If the old lady is not a living person, then should we still stay in the home that she assigned for us? The white paper on the door fluttered. Neither Master Bai nor Olway could not make the decision. Let's go in to take a look first. The old lady had a good relationship with me before she died, she won't harm us. At least, I think she won't. Chin Ji's group entered the home, and the place was similar to other houses, but there was not a white lantern outside the door. This isn't like what the old lady said, there's only one room in here. Chin Gu walked in front, and after crossing the empty courtyard, he opened the inner room door. A weird smell drifted out from the room. When they got used to it, the three of them turned to look inside the room with their eyes bulging. Inside the home's only room sat three black coffins. One home, three rooms. Could the old lady be referring to the coffins? Ol Wei's face was completely white. Something is seriously not right with this place, we should leave. Chapter 314, Inversion, Since We're Already Here Chen Gu walked toward the coffins. Calm down. Master Bai grabbed Chen Gu. Those are for dead people. He was a bit loud, and Ol Wei came to stop both of them. This place is off, we need to be very careful. The three rooms mentioned by the old lady should be these three coffins. She's not a living person, so for her, coffins are rooms. Chin Gu pried Master Bai's hand off calmly. Is there something wrong with my logic? The problem is. Master Bai and Ol Wei did not know how to communicate with Chin Gu. After a long pause, Ol Wei asked, Aren't you afraid around these things? Of course, I am, but fear is not going to help us in this situation, is it? Chin Gu looked at Ol Wei. Don't let it get to you. Come help me. The three walked to the coffins. They were roughly made, and they had a layer of dark brown coating. There was a light smell. Is that decomposition? Master Bai looked at Ol Wei. No, decomposition is much worse. This should be the smell of decaying wood. Knowing Chen Gu would not leave that easily, Ol Wei quickly got into the correct frame of mind. After all, he was an experienced police officer and would be dependable during the crucial moment. Listen to me, we cannot believe the old lady fully. We'd better be careful. 
When we were led this way, I memorized the route. The three of us will stay here for now, but if danger comes, we'll run out immediately. Remember to follow behind me, and make sure not to get left behind. There's only one way to find out whether the old woman was lying or not. Chen Gu put his hands on the coffin lid. What are you doing? Opening the coffin. Chen Gu pushed, and the lid slid off a little. You seriously plan to sleep here with one of the coffins? It depends. Chen Gu pushed the coffin half open, and he peered in. It had a set of grave clothes at the bottom of the coffin. Don't touch it. This is a real taboo. What if you offend the spirits? Master Bai held Chen Ji's hands tightly, and Ol Wei also ran over to pull Chen Gu back. I just want to see what's so mysterious about this place. Ol Wei and Master Bai sighed when they finally got Chen Gu to calm down. However, what Chen Gu said next got them all worried again. My plan is to open all the coffins we find in this village. The village's biggest secret should be inside the coffins. Please don't say something like that when you're outside, I'm afraid the villagers might kill you if they hear you. Master Bai walked to stand beside the coffin. He thought about closing the coffin, but when he glanced at the clothes inside, his brows locked. Why are their grave clothes bright red? Yes, that confused me when I first saw it too, so I planned to take it out to have a closer look. Chen Gu joined Master Bai. White lantern above the door, white paper on the door, red grave clothes, this village seems to invert all the common Chinese practices. This reminds me of Ming Hun. You even know about Ming Hun? Master Bai glanced at Chen Gu. One of the scenarios at my haunted house is Ming Hun themed. A living bride for a dead groom. Chen Gu wanted to continue the story when both Master Bai and Ou Wei waved at him to stop. That's enough, it's already scary enough. The two of them stood beside the coffin, looking inside at the red grave clothes, and it just did not feel right. Bang! A sudden noise spooked Master Bai and Ou Wei. They turned and saw Chen Gu was pushing the other two coffins open. Three coffins meant three set of red grave clothes. As they shone the flashlight at them, it looked like the coffins were bleeding. All the sizes are different, there's for male and female. Looks like a family of three. Chen Gu stood beside the coffin, I'm wondering, the coffins are inside the house, so where are the bodies? He turned to ask Master Bai, could this be one of Coffin Village's cultures? Every family will prepare a living coffin even when they're still alive? I suppose so. Master Bai could not be sure. There aren't any bodies inside the coffins, and if this is really a living coffin, then it means that the owners are still alive. Chin Gu scratched his chin. What do you think the chances are that they will return tonight? How will they react when they see we're inside their home? He was just asking that, but Master Bai and Ol Wei each sucked in a cold breath. Perhaps it'll be good if they return we can ask them what's going on with the village. Master Bai still insisted that Coffin Village's people could be communicated with. Special times call for special measures. Would normal people leave their home in the middle of the night inside a deep mountain? Chen Gu gave his suggestion. I think we should ambush them at the door and capture them when they walk in. They're a family of three, and there's three of us. After detaining them, remember to keep their mouths shut. Shove them inside the coffins, and we'll use the grave clothes to bind them. Then we can start the interrogation. Chen Gu gave his plan, but Master Bai and Ol Wei looked at him with weird expressions. That isn't good, right? They haven't done anything bad to us after all. Master Bai was an honest man. He moved away from Chen Gu and stood beside Ol Wei. At a time like this, he felt better siding with the police. It'll be too late to react when we realize they want to harm us. This is called taking the initiative. Chen Gu said so and moved to stand behind the door. He appeared masterful as he readied himself for the ambush, as if he had done this many times already. Ol Wei, you can hide under the window, and Master Bai, you hide beside the second coffin. I checked it earlier, that corner is perfectly hidden from sight. Who did you learn all this from? 
Wei and Master Bai moved to their spots. For some reason, they followed Chen Ji's instruction. I operate a haunted house, and the best skill is to make use of the geography to scare the visitors. Chen Gu looked through the slit into the small courtyard. You two can rest for a while, it must have been tiring walking for so long already. Okay, we'll do this one hour each, so everyone can have the chance to rest. Ol Wei suggested. Master Bai nodded. No problem, I might be old, but I'm still healthy. I should be able to survive one sleepless night. There's no need. Chen Gu turned back from the door to look at Ol Wei and Master Bai. He reached into his backpack to soothe the angry white cat. Shush, they're coming. Chapter 315, Look Up Ol Wei and Master Bai zipped up their lips and held their breath. Chen Gu grabbed the hammer's handle in his backpack and turned his eyes back to the door. Along the dark road, a cold misty light was getting closer. What is that? The light stopped at the front door and filtered into the courtyard through the slit in the door. Creak. The front door was pushed open. There was nothing outside the house, there was no one at the door. The only change was an additional white lantern hanging on the door. When Chin Ji's group entered the house, there had definitely not been a white lantern. Inside this village, the lantern seemed to have some special importance. They're coming in. The white lantern shone a pale light on the floor. There was no one in the courtyard, but there were three shadows on the floor, two tall and one short. The shadows flickered in the courtyard, and they did not seem to notice the three outsiders hiding inside the room. A cold draft picked up and the front door closed on its own. When the pale light disappeared, three strange creatures appeared. Their heads were pressed to their chests, and they walked forward on tiptoe. The unkempt hair blocked their faces, and their clothes were stained with blood. They were radiating a strange stench. It's similar to the smell at the third sick hall. They've been inside the door. Chin Gu signaled for Ol Wei and Master Bai to hide. The three creatures stood in the middle of the courtyard, and as Chin Gu expected, there were two adults and one child. The way they were standing was very weird. They leaned forward like they would topple into the room at any moment. The atmosphere was tense. As time passed, the three creatures outside the room seemed to sense something. They moved forward at the same time and walked to the door with a weird gait. Since they were just separated by a door, Chen Gu could see the pattern on their clothes. The three shadows did not enter the room but stopped at the door. The two adults kept their heads lowered, but the child had a paper doll in its hands. It kept using its fingers to tear on the doll, and whenever he did so, the paper doll seemed to come alive, its expression filled with pain as it begged for mercy. However, the child did not stop. If anything, it continued to find other ways to play with the doll. It seems like there's a name on the doll. With his Yin Yang vision, Chen Gu could see the name on the doll, and he felt like he had seen that name in Lin Guan Village. Wait, could the doll be one of the people who disappeared from Lin Guan Village? There was a bunch of Coffin Village's escapees that settled at Lin Guan Village, but other than themselves, no one knew the real reason they escaped from Coffin Village. The shadows stopped at the door for several seconds. Seemingly intent on investigating if there were people hiding inside the room, one of the shadows walked to the window. Chen Gu could clearly see the lowered head stick itself to the window and use it to push the wooden windowpane open. The sticky hair dangled downward. It planned to poke its head in. At the time, Ol Wei was squatting below the window. He did not know there was another head just above his own. Chen Gu looked at Ol Wei, but his expression did not change. Ol Wei saw Chen Gu looking at him, and based on the young man's expression, he thought everything was fine. The hair touched Ol Wei's neck, and he even reached out to scratch it. Ol Wei's hand practically brushed past the face above his head. Master Bai, who hid behind the coffin, saw everything. His lips were chattering, and he tried his best to alert Ol Wei. Perhaps Ol Wei also felt that something was wrong. He moved his eyes away from Chin Gu and turned to Master Bai. Master Bai reached out one finger, and he kept pointing upward, it was hard to miss the hint. 
above me? Ol Wei reached out to touch his head, but he did not find anything. Since Master Bai kept pointing up, he raised his hands upward. Behind the door, Chen Gu gripped the hammer. His original plan had been to wait for the ghost to reach half of his body and before he made his move, but Ol Wei had pushed his plan forward. As Chen Gu expected, under Master Bai's instruction, Ol Wei's hands kept moving upward. His fingertips touched something, and it felt very cold. His neck froze, and Ol Wei slowly turned his head upward. He let it back and looked right into the male ghost's eyes. Now. Chen Gu pressed the recorder and swung the hammer at the window above Ol Wei's head. Almost at the same time, the three ghosts attacked from the door and window. The ghost that was closest to Ol Wei peeled his mouth back. Blood vessels moved within it as he tried to bite Ol Wei's face. Ol Wei who had been wondering what was above him one second earlier, did not have chance to react. He did not even have time to show fear when the ghost's mouth opened wide. He was about to scream when a scary-looking hammer flew past his head. Bang! Chen Gu did not hold back, and the hammer landed right on the ghost's face. It sent the ghost flying along with the window frame. My god! Ol Wei had not even closed his lips and Chen Gu also fell out of the room with a man wearing half a red shirt standing beside him. After the ghost at the window was knocked out of the room, the two shadows raised their heads. The dead faces exposed vicious expressions. They wanted to charge into the room, but Chen Gu was running at them. The battle ended as soon as it started. In less than one second, Su Yin already got two of the shadows on the ground. Su Yin was maddened by bloodlust. He did not have the habit of leaving things alive, so the two shadows soon became blood stains on his shirt. The last shadow landed on all fours. It was about to clamber out when it was pressed down from behind by Su Yin. The whole process took, at most, ten seconds. During that time, the only thing Chen Gu could do was turn around to close the door. Su Yin seems to have gotten stronger. The shirt knitted with blood stuck to his body. Su Yin was like a lonely pianist, waving his tapered fingers to flick the blood off his hands. His body disappeared as Chen Gu turned the recorder off. What happened earlier? Ol Wei and Master Bai ran out of the room. They were covered in cold sweat, and panic was apparent on their faces. I don't know either. Chen Gu shrugged. When I gave chase after them, the three shadows immediately left the place. He pointed at the open front door and picked up the hammer. We should be more careful. We made a loud commotion earlier, perhaps more monsters will be coming. Do you know the meaning of the word, careful? Ol Wei touched his head as he looked at the hammer in Chen Ji's hand. He could not believe that thing flew inches away from his head earlier. Chapter 316, Grave Clothes, That Was to Save You Chen Gu shoved the hammer back into his backpack. The escape of the three shadows means that we've been exposed, we cannot stay here any longer. We're finally leaving? Ol Wei had been wanting to leave for a long time already. Coffin Village is very quiet at night, so our fight earlier must have echoed very far. I'm afraid other monsters might hear that and come to surround us. Chen Gu had his own plan. The first reaction of the earlier three monsters when they saw us was to attack. This goes to show that it wasn't out of kindness the old lady led us here. The villagers here are not as kind as Master Bai assumed. Master Bai disagreed with Chen Gu. I haven't been inside Coffin Village at night before, but I don't understand this change. In my memory, Coffin Village's real villagers would not do something like this, they're no different from normal people. Master Bai, you haven't been back here for years already, you don't know what happened when you were gone so we'd better be careful. Chen Gu looked around and bent over to pick up the paper doll on the floor. The paper doll that had been tormented by the boy had its limbs almost torn off, and its expression was one of pain. Zhu Fengxi. There was a name on the back of the doll. It was unknown what kind of ink it was, but based on Chen Ji's experience, it felt like dried blood. This name is rather familiar. Master Bai moved close to Chen Gu to take a look at the doll. 
He sounds like one of the escapes from Coffin Village. The dolls have the names of the escapees. Chin Gu related this to the weird phenomena he had observed at Lin Guan Village. Many old houses had a cleaver behind the door and a rope by the window. Combining that with what had happened to them inside the house, he had a brief understanding why things were that way. If a monster tried to crawl in through the window, then the rope was to tie around their neck, and the cleaver behind the door was for self-defense. The more isolated the village, the weirder the tradition, that was the only way Chen Gu could interpret these traditions. Those who escaped from Coffin Village spent their days in fear. Could the thing that caused that fear be the ghost from Coffin Village? If they were captured, would they end up as paper dolls to be tormented eternally? Chen Gu had another question that needed to be answered. Why did these people escape from Coffin Village in the first place? What kind of event transpired at this old village to cause a mass exodus? To know all that, I'll need to find a villager to ask. Chin Gu pocketed the paper doll. I have a plan to discuss with you. Tell me. First, we leave this village. Okay. Ol Wei and Master Bai nodded. They also felt that the village was too dangerous. Then, we'll inspect each house, starting from the ones near the entrance, moving inwards. No matter what we come across, we must detain them. There was a sparkle in Chen Ji's eyes. As long as we don't make too much noise, we should be able to take them down one by one. Chen Gu had given his plan much thought. Whenever Su Yin consumed a ghost, the blood stain on his clothes increased. Based on this progression, there was a high chance of him turning into a real red specter that night. There was a great power difference between a normal specter and a red specter. Without a red specter by his side, Chin Gu did not feel safe. You're planning to demolish a whole village? Ol Wei was a police officer, so he frowned when he heard Chin Ji's suggestion. However, Master Bai had gotten used to Chin Ji's crazy ideas. We should leave the village first before we decide what to do. Master Bai walked ahead, his hand holding the jade. A pale-faced Ol Wei followed behind Master Bai, but Chin Gu stood where he was. After the three monsters were consumed by Su Yin, the white cat did not return to normal. It was still hissing and scratching the backpack. Something is still nearby. Chen Gu looked around him. A human head seemed to flash across the left wall of the room with the coffins. The room next door? Chen Gu did not stay and walked out. White lanterns hung on both sides of the road, shining a pale light. For some reason, Chin Gu had a feeling the number of white lanterns had increased. What is the meaning of these lanterns? If there's a white lantern, meaning the place is occupied? Chin Gu, why aren't you coming? Coming. Chin Gu passed the door next door, and he turned to look. The wooden door was locked, and weirdly enough, there was not a white lantern on this door. The thing I saw earlier wasn't a ghost? Chin Gu maintained his distance from Ol Wei and Master Bai, but he kept his attention on the road behind him. When he turned the corner and Chin Gu would be lost behind the wall, he slowed down, leaned back, and glanced down the corner. The door had been opened, and bright red grave clothes dangled at the door. To not expose himself, Chin Gu stopped for less than one second, but his heart was gripped with concern. The grave clothes moved on their own? They continued walking through the weird village decorated with white lanterns, followed by the red grave clothes. The wind blew, and it carried out voices from the houses on both sides. It sounded like laughter and tears. If one paid more attention, there was also the sound of chewing. As the night deepened, the village became creepier. Other places become quieter at night, but this place is completely different. The later it gets, the livelier it becomes. Chen Gu tried to remember the ghosts that he had met that night. The ghost who wanted to drag me into the coffin inside the valley and the family of three seemed to be different. In comparison, the one inside the village is smarter. They had been inside Coffin Village less than half an hour, but so many weird things happened already. Chen Gu suspected that a blood door was hiding inside this village, and it was a door that was wide open without anyone watching over it. If we search the houses one by one, eventually, 
we'll find that home in Fan Yu's drawing. When Chen Gu turned the next corner, he glanced behind him. The grave clothes were collapsed on the floor and closer to them. Being chased by clothes worn by dead people doesn't feel good. Chen Gu reached for the recorder, and he bumped into Ou Wei. Why did you stop? Something is wrong. Ou Wei looked at completely unfamiliar street, and his face turned paler. The road that we used earlier seemed to have disappeared. We're lost? Chen Gu thought about it and patted Ou Wei on his shoulder. Don't worry, we only need to ask for directions. This place has more ghosts than people, who are you going to ask? Ou Wei said, but there was no reply. He turned around and saw Chen Gu walking away with the hammer. Chapter 317, Baby, Don't Move Away on Your Own. Slow Down. Ou Wei grabbed Master Bai and rushed after Chen Gu. Their combined age was more than 100, but they tried to keep up. I'm just trying to ask for directions, why are you guys following me? Chen Gu did not want to expose Su Yin before Ou Wei, so he moved his finger away from the recorder. There are no living souls in this village, who are you going to ask? Ou Wei was worried that Chen Gu might do something stupid like using the hammer to break down the door of some of the houses. You'll see. Chen Gu told Ou Wei to keep quiet. He leaned against the wall by the corner. He counted his heartbeat and tightened his grip on the hammer. He waited for a full minute, but the red grave clothes did not show up. Chen Gu leaned forward, and the clothes had already disappeared. It ran away. It had probably heard Ou Wei's voice, so it had gone into hiding. Chen Gu leaned back against the wall and considered his next course of action. Coffin Village is a three-star scenario, but the fright level so far hasn't reached the standard of a three-star scenario. Chen Gu looked at the many houses that were no different from one another. Making us lose our way is just the beginning. The monsters inside this village are slowly waking up. There had to be a red specter in the village somewhere. That was what Chen Gu worried about the most, he knew how dangerous those two words could be. Temporarily, there is no better option. I'll need to continue this investigation and feed the stragglers to Su Yin. If he can transform into a red specter tonight, even if I fail the mission, not all is lost. Chen Gu was a good person, but he was afraid of running into a bad red specter. If Su Yin consumed so many spirits inside the village, it might anger the specter. Chen Gu calculated the ghosts that he had, and the only one he could depend on was Su Yin. The newly acquired Yen Danian might be a lesser red specter, but his last power had not been unlocked. Furthermore, based on his usual appearance, he did not look like a particularly aggressive spirit. If he was torn apart by the red specter, then Chen Gu would cry for a long time. I'll need to be careful. Chen Gu reminded himself and turned toward Master Bai. The monsters inside the village are rousing. You've been here before, do you know if there are any special buildings at this place? There's an ancestral hall at the deepest part of the village. The place is forbidden to outsiders. The village has many wells, but the villagers normally go to the other side of the mountain to gather fresh water instead of using the wells. They gave wells a wide berth. Master Bai tried his best to jog his memory. There's also another strange thing. This village has no village elder, the one who looked over everyone was a woman. She wasn't old and lived at the largest house alone. Forbidding outsiders from going to the ancestral hall is understandable, but why are they afraid of wells? Is the water tainted? Does the water cause the abnormalities? Chen Gu was confused. The water was fine. My father once used a captured animal to test it out, and it was normal water. However, the villagers refused to drink it and even forbade us from doing more testing. Master Bai also did not know why. We have to pay attention to these places, the more they stop us from getting close to these places, the higher the chance they're hiding something. Okay, so where shall we go now? Completely lost with the white lanterns swaying in the wind, it was scary. We'll keep moving on for now. The three went back down the road, but the old home with the coffins was gone. Instead, there were homes with white lanterns on their doors. Now, we're truly trapped. 
Master Bai's hand went to the jade necklace on his neck. It's not good for us to keep going around in circles. Why don't we just stay in one of the houses for the night? The houses with white lanterns are mostly occupied by ghosts, but the information was given by the old lady. She might be trying to trick us. Old Wei thought back to what had happened that night, and it felt like a dream. Shall we go inside to confirm? Master Bai walked to one of the homes. He raised his hand but did not dare to knock on it. The warning given by the old lady reverberated in his mind, don't knock on the door at night. Chen Gu did not stop Master Bai. He was concentrating on what to do. He might have appeared rash, but that was because, of the three of them, he knew how dangerous Coffin Village was. We cannot stay at the same place anymore, it might attract the ghosts. Chen Gu was trying to come up with a solution when the white cat in his backpack suddenly meowed. It was shrill and mixed with a rare emotion of fear. The last time Chen Gu heard this was at his haunted house when the door in the toilet was almost open. Something is coming. Chen Gu responded immediately. He grabbed Master Bai and Ol Wei, and the three of them rushed into the house with the white lantern. Chen Gu, what are you doing? Shush, do not say a word. Chen Gu closed the wooden door, and in that instant, there were the cries of a baby coming from the street. It's a child? Quiet. Seeing how intense Chen Gu was, Ol Wei and Master Bai were also made nervous. They stood where they were, unwilling to move. The crying sound came closer and closer. Even with their hands over their eyes, the blood-curdling cries still echoed in their brain. Chen Ji's upper body leaned forward, he did not dare to make a move lest he made a sound. He leaned closer to the middle gap in the door and used his Yin Yang vision to look out at the street. The lanterns hanging on the doors darkened like they were dyed red. The wind stopped howling, and only the baby's crying remained. It's coming. A small arm reached out from the corner. Chin Ji's pupils narrowed as he focused his gaze in that direction. Soon, the monster showed its face. It looked like a drowned baby. He had no hair, and his skin was bloated. His facial features were blurry, and he was swaddled in a red cloth. A red specter? A red specter this young. The baby continued crying. He crawled speedily on the ground like he was looking for something. He crawled until he reached the house that Chin Ji's group was hiding in. The boy's face turned up and the wrinkled skin was pulled back to reveal his real face. The baby had no eyes and nose but only three black holes and a weirdly shaped mouth. Chen Gu held his breath. He was thankful that he had brought the white cat with him because without its warning, with the monster's speed, he would not have had time to start the recorder before he was assaulted. Chapter 318, Series of Weird Events His finger pressed on the play button, and Chen Gu slowly bent his body down. His muscles tensed like a bow ready to fire. The memory of fighting the Ghost Story Society's Red Spectre was still fresh in his mind. That day, he had summoned Su Yin and the Pen Spurt at the same time, but they could barely stop the Red Spectre for ten seconds. This was the second time he was going to face a Red Spectre without Zhang Ya. Different from Fang Hua Apartments, this time, he had brought all of the ghosts inside the haunted house with him. Ten against one, it should be fine. His hair stood on end, Chen Gu was ready for combat. The ghost baby outside looked at the wooden door, and its body slowly turned wrinkled. Pungent red liquid seeped out of his skin, and after it landed to the floor, it circled around him like tadpoles. All the blood seemed to possess its own consciousness. It looked similar to the blood vessels on the monsters possessing the Ghost Story Society's member. It was filled with resentment and malice. The child looks only several months old, he shouldn't remember much about life, so how can he carry such strong resentment? Chen Gu had not discovered all the details concerning the formation of a red specter. He knew what the key points were, they had to filled with resentment at the time of death, and they were naturally aggressive. Red specters were the representation of cruelty and violence. The first reaction when they saw other ghosts was to tear them open and consume them. Both Zhang Ya and Su Yin showed this quality. 
Chen Gu did not dare let his guard down when facing the red specters. The light shining from the lanterns dampened, and the street was slowly dyed red. The baby turned his body around, but he did not launch an attack directly. Instead, he crawled slowly toward the door. The blood flowed underneath him like it would rush at the door at any moment. Chen Gu rehearsed the event in his mind. He would call out Su Yin first and then jump back to use Yan Danian's power. Even if he could not pull the ghost baby into the comic, at least it would be able to slow him down. Using that chance, he would summon the other ghosts in the comic. With the collective power of all the ghosts, maybe they could ambush the ghost baby. Chen Gu had been avoiding altercations with red specters, but that did not mean that he was completely helpless. The risk is huge, but if I can kill the ghost baby for Su Yin to consume then he will certainly transform into a new red specter. Thinking about this, Chen Gu made the decision to bet his life on this chance. His Yin Yang vision was radiating with coldness. He was completely ready when the ghost baby outside the door stopped. His wrinkled ears moved. A woman's voice was calling his name from somewhere far away. The ugly face showed a trace of fear and concern. The pool of blood on the floor returned to his body, and the skin returned to its usual plumpness. The ghost baby then left the scene quickly. When the ghost baby disappeared, Chin Gu loosened his tightly gripped fists, and he sighed. Hard to tell whether his departure is a good thing or a bad thing. Chin Ji's expression was complicated. The ghost baby's departure meant that he had avoided a battle that he would have had a hard time winning, but since the woman's voice could scare the baby away, this meant that the village had a red specter that was scarier than the ghost baby. After all, it is a three-star scenario. Massaging his fingers, Chin Gu straightened himself and returned to Ol Wei and Master Bai. Temporarily, it's fine. The thing has left. What happened earlier? What came? Did it stay outside the door for a while? Ol Wei rubbed his nose. Even through the door, we could smell the pungent smell of blood. It was a little baby. A baby? It's hard to explain, Chen Gu grumbled. But remember this. If you see anything wearing red clothes in this village, go into hiding immediately. Do not try to fight it, running is probably pointless. Red clothes. Ol Wei nodded and remembered this warning. So, where shall we go now? Let's stay here for now. The night deepened, and more and more scary things started to appear inside Coffin Village, so Chen Gu did not dare move about wantonly. This Coffin Village's trial mission only asks me for one thing, but the difficulty is probably higher than the third sick hall. Staying alive, two simple words, but for Chen Gu, it was a huge challenge. Ghost Baby and the woman who summoned the Ghost Baby away, Coffin Village has at least two red specters, and that woman is probably stronger than a normal red specter. Chen Gu turned to look at his own shadow. Other than Zhang Ya and Su Yin, the other specters from his haunted house only looked scary on the surface. Thankfully, there was no fight, or the ten might have lost to the one. Chen Gu patted the white cat on its head. The cat had done a good job but it still had not recovered from the shock. Its pair of multicolored eyes looked at Chin Gu with resentment, and the hair on its neck was still standing. Don't worry, tell me if there's danger. I will not leave you behind. Chin Gu carried his backpack and stood in the courtyard with the hammer. The old house was huge. The courtyard was filled with weeds, and it had two dead trees. There are lanterns on the door, so this place probably houses some ghosts. Be careful. Chen Gu, wait a minute. Master Bai used the flashlight to shine at the two trees. Don't you think these trees are familiar? Dried branches, exposed roots, and a bulging trunk. Doesn't it look like the tree that covered the Zhu family's eldest daughter? Chen Gu did feel that way after being reminded by Master Bai. At the time, Zhu Xinro had been shoved into the hole under the tree headfirst. He pushed the tree, and the roots were already rotten. Chen Gu could see roughly someone was buried under the tree. Don't knock the tree down. Master Bai stopped Chen Gu. It is an ancient tradition to bury cursed people in the ground like this after they die. 
People plant a peach tree above their grave because, according to legend, a peach tree can stop the curse they're carrying. Meaning it is for protection? Chin Gu touched the trunk, but something was not right. Master Bai, these don't appear to be peach trees. The three studied for a long time before they managed to identify the trees as locust trees. Locust trees are the most wicked of all the trees. This is the first time I have seen people planting locust trees above someone's grave. Master Bai gripped Chin Ji's arm. Let's not create any more trouble. We'll stay away from them, and perhaps they will leave us alone. That's hard to say. There are two bodies buried in the courtyard, so this place is definitely haunted. Perhaps we've already been targeted. Chapter 319, Secret of Coffin Village, Why Are You So Intent on Jinxing Us? Master Bai still minded these things, but Chin Gu was the complete opposite. It'll be fine. Just follow behind me. He walked through the courtyard with the hammer and entered the main room. The layout of the old house was very interesting. There were bedrooms on each side of the main room, but there were no beds. Instead, each bedroom had a coffin in it. Have you noticed something peculiar about these houses? Chin Gu leaned against the hammer and scanned his surroundings. You mean the coffins inside the house? Master Bai pushed the door open through his clothes, he did not want to touch anything there. Chin Gu shook his head. Not that. The houses don't seem to have an oven or a fire starter. Ol Wei looked at Master Bai. If Chin Gu had not brought that up, they would not have noticed this problem. The fire starter is the place where people alight fire and cook meals. Without that, how are they supposed to eat? Chin Gu sat on the chair, and his tone slowed down, or do the villagers not need to eat? Is this a dead person's home? If that is true, then it would make sense to have coffins instead of beds. His voice was calm, but it sent chills up his two listeners' spines. The white lanterns, white paper on the door, coffin in the room, could this whole village be a ghost village? Chin Gu thought back to the information he found when he was building the Minghan scenario. There was a story about a massacre that happened to a village deep in the mountains during the war period. Several years later, people got lost inside the mountain and they accidentally wandered inside the village. Then they saw every family was having a funeral, and the villagers looked weird. The outsiders didn't dare ask any question and escaped the village in the middle of the night. When they returned to the village in the morning, the place had been abandoned for a long time already, and there was no sign of people living there. You mean, we're now inside a ghost village? Ol Wei asked uncertainly. Coffin village is scarier than that. I feel this place has a bigger secret that we haven't uncovered yet. Chin Gu placed the hammer on his feet and cupped his chin in his palm. The people in this village are much more complicated than we think. There are original villagers that turned into ghosts, escaped villagers who were captured, and then us outsiders. The old lady's soul had no need to lie to us about the outsiders. Other than us, other people are also trapped inside this village. No matter who they were. I think we should meet up with them. But how do we do that? We can't even find a way out ourselves. I think we need to be more careful of our surroundings then. Chin Gu then turned to look outside. He accidentally saw half a human face lying on the wall. Someone's there. He jumped up immediately. The sudden warning alerted Ol Wei and Master Bai. What did you see? There was a human face on the wall. I saw it once inside the previous home. At the time, it flashed past temporarily, and then I saw a set of grave clothes walking out the door, it was following us. Chin Gu told the situation to Ol Wei and Master Bai. He's just next door, shall we go take a look? Ol Wei was just suggesting that, he did not want to wander off. If the person wants to run, we won't be able to catch it. Chin Gu looked at the wall. I have a feeling it has a reason for following us, and it didn't seem like it's going to harm us. He just finished when the front door slowly opened and bright red grave clothes stood in the middle of the door. Don't fret. This is the thing that has been following us. In the middle of the night, the door was pushed open, and the grave clothes stood alone. Anyone would have been scared looking at this. 
Are you a person or a ghost? Chen Gu stood inside the room and hid the hammer behind him. The person seemed to struggle for a long time before coming to a decision. The grave clothes were open from the middle, and they were hiding a thin, short man. His lips fell open, and after a long time, he said, I'm here to help you. Help us? Wonderful, why don't you come in first? Chen Gu smiled kindly. He gripped the hammer, he wanted to trick the man to come into the room first. The man shook his head. He had been following Chen Gu, so he knew Chen Ji's tricks. I'll just stay out here. The man removed the grave clothes, and when his body completely removed itself from the grave clothes, Chen Gu saw that the man had one large arm and one small arm. I've seen you when you entered the village, but before I could accost any of you, you were tricked away by the ghosts. I was worried, so I trailed behind you while wearing the ghost's grave clothes. I wanted to find the chance to save you. The man sounded sincere, but Chin Gu did not believe that the man would put himself in such danger for a stranger. You followed us just so you can save us. Saving you is saving me. You might not believe me, but if we are unable to leave this village tonight, we're all going to die. The man lowered his voice, and fear and anxiety were apparent in his tone. The door will open tonight, and the thing will come out from behind the door again. The door will open tonight? Chen Gu frowned. You're one of the original villagers here, right? Can you tell us what happened to Coffin Village? Why did it turn into its current situation? Coffin Village? I guess the name fits. The man closed the door and walked to the middle of the courtyard. It was hard to tell how old he was from his looks. No one can remember this village's original name. The reason it has become like this has plenty to do with a woman. Our village is hidden deep inside the forest, and this isolates us from the rest of the world. It was very difficult for a man to find an unrelated wife, so we settled with close marriage. However, that led to many abnormalities. The elder at the time worried that we would die out eventually, so after a discussion with the villagers, they decided to kidnap wives from the outside. The first few times were perfectly fine. If the new wife refused to listen, they would be locked up, starved, and beaten. Eventually, they would learn. However, the last time, they caught the young lady of a scholar's family. She was stubborn and refused to submit. She escaped several times, and she was almost beaten to death every time. It was not until she was pregnant that she stopped running away. The villagers thought that was the end of her resistance. But just as the girl's new family was preparing to celebrate the happy occasion, she jumped into the well. Chapter 320, Sacrifice One body, two deaths. All the villagers said that the woman was unlucky, so they found a few young fellas to come crack open the well to haul the body up. However, weird things happened then. The woman's head was facing downward when she jumped, but halfway through the digging, people saw the woman's face turning upward. The dead person's face was soaked until it was white. Her eyes were bulging, staring at the people outside the well. With guilt suffocating their hearts, the young men were all spooked, and none had the courage to continue digging. But they couldn't just leave the body inside the well. The elder discussed this with the girl's new family and they would provide the money to hire outsiders to dig the well. However, when they returned to the well the next day, the body, which had been facing upward, changed to legs facing upwards. It looked like she was trying to swim deeper into the well. Those who saw this reported it to the elder. To prevent panic, the elder said the earlier digging must have affected the water flow and the body slipped down on its own. No one bought this excuse, and on the third day, the villagers discovered that the body inside the well had disappeared. There are in total four wells around the village. They were built on top of the same underground river. Since the body had disappeared, they thought it might float up in any one of them. Then weird things continued to happen. The well that the woman died in was the west well, so to avoid her, many people went to the east well. The water looked normal, but when they used it to cook rice, they would discover woman's long hair in the rice. One week later, those who lived near the well heard the sound of water splashing in the middle of the night like something was climbing up the wall of the well. 
The villager looked out the window and saw a red shadow climbing out the well. The following day, the villagers discovered the woman's husband dead in his own bedroom. The woman's husband was one with a deformity, he had a problem on his face and his arms. When he died, his head was shoved inside a water barrel, cause of death was drowning. This sent a wave of panic through the village. The elder called everyone and suggested calling a doctor from outside to take a look, but before the doctor arrived, the livestock in the village started to die by massive numbers. Some who were afraid uprooted and left. However, the scariest thing was, every night, those deserters would be found deposited at the valley in front of the village with various causes of death. It appeared like whoever drank the well water would be dragged back and killed. The villagers didn't have time to build coffins and have funerals because there were too many dead people, so they just left them half buried. Escaping the village meant certain death, and staying behind wasn't going to save us either. The villagers tried many things, but they couldn't do anything to the female ghost. Her resentment was too deep, and every night, one or two families would be found dead. The number of deaths soared. The people here were superstitious, and we believed if the dead weren't buried inside coffin, they would return as a hungry ghost. No one knew who would die next, but death was coming. Therefore, every family started to make their own coffins, and this was why each family had coffins instead of beds. One month later, the woman finally stopped, but by then, there was no normal-looking person left in the village. She had killed every normal person and sinner in the village. Then, people understood what she was trying to do. It was because the villagers were afraid of the effects of consanguineous marriages on the future generations that they started kidnapping outside women. Thus, the female ghost would kill all the normal villagers and leave behind the abnormal monsters inside the village. Her message was, let the villagers only show themselves as monsters. The more the man got through his story, the more agitated he became. He waved his arms of different lengths. The ancestry's lineage has been corrupted, and only monsters remain in the village. Those who were born normal were killed and only deformed creatures please the woman and might escape her wicked claws. The man's story was rather heavy. Chin Gu did not say anything, it was Ol Wei who spoke first. My identity aside, there's no one I hate more than human kidnappers. That happened many years ago, and the people have been punished and killed. Now, only the innocent are being affected. The man waved his arm. No one wishes to be a monster. When I saw my reflection in the water, I wanted to die, but I'm not satisfied. He clenched his fists, and it looked funny, but no one was laughing. If this was one year ago, I wouldn't have thought to resist, but things are different. There was an indescribable expression on his despair-filled face. I have my own child, a little boy with no deformities. You have your own child? Yes, it is miracle. Two monsters with their own child. The man sighed. I cannot leave him here, he'll be targeted by the woman. Even if the woman doesn't discover my child, the other monsters in the village will sacrifice him to her to save their own lives. Chen Gu heard the anomaly in the man's words. The other villagers will sacrifice your child? The people here have gone insane. No, they can't even be known as people anymore. The man's nails scratched his skin. Many years ago, when the ghost massacred the village, only one family escaped her vengeance. The family had a single daughter. The family was the Zhu family. It was this Zhu woman who aided her first escape. After the woman got caught, even the Zhu daughter suffered the same fate and got tied up and beaten. Then, when the woman got bullied, it was often this Zhu woman who came to her aid. That was probably why Zhu family was spared. As the number of villagers dwindled, the remaining villagers asked the Zhu woman to become the new elder to protect themselves. They wanted her to communicate with the female ghost. The villagers thought she would help them beg for mercy, but reality was different. The Zhu woman sided with the ghost, and she became the tool for the ghost to manage the village. To enjoy better torment, the ghost demanded that whenever we spot a normal newborn, we have to carry it to the Zhu woman. If someone dares to hide that secret, they will be tortured and killed. 
No one knows what happens to the babies after they are brought to the Zhu family. We only know that after the Zhu woman carries the babies into her darkened home, they never return. His eyes were filled with fear and uncertainty. The man clasped his abnormal hands together. This rule persists until today. My boy's situation has been exposed to the villagers, so I can only choose to collaborate with you outsiders. Please take my son out of this place before it is too late. 